Summon Sign is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode five of Summon Sign Last Stand Media's weekly in-depth gaming discussion podcast. I am your host, as always, Brad Ellis. And joining me this week is Gene Park, Washington Post. Good homie. What's up, dude? Good morning. Uh, happy to be back on Summon Sign. Uh, actually, feeling kind of tired right now because uh, I was actually up late gaming last night, uh, which is... Which is uh, <laughs> What we do here uh, in, in the number one gaming podcast, on <laughs> that's right. we do a lot of gaming here. Uh, that's right. Sure enough, but yeah. We'll, get, we'll wake Good you up, here. Gene. Fear not. Cool. We'll get hyped. And also, I'm very excited. First time meeting this gentleman. Been listening to him for, oh, for a while, so it's great to have Lord Cognito. Iron Yo. Lord's podcast, all that good stuff. Yo. Very hyped to have Cog on here. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm kind of the same boat as Gene for different tired. reasons. I was uh, I was out last night. My night is one. I was at the ball with my friends. We were going crazy. <laughs> it was an uh, improbable sports comeback. But uh, yeah, that and a uh, lot of games. But I'm good, good to be here. I've been summoned to the summon sign. I see you That's doing right. your thing. You know, and it's finally, finally glad we were able to make this happen. Then we got Gene in the summon sign. So it's going to oh, be a yeah. fun show. Well, That's right. We it was got football some... last night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, dude, you're a 49ers fan, right? You well, feeling good? I'm, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> it was the tale of two halves. The entire bar is Lions fans, so I'm sitting there at every first, every successful thing they do, and they clap it. So you start to feel it, and then they start to blow you out. You're like, man, I'm already preparing myself mentally. This is not going to be a good night. Yeah. And then I, you see it slowly chip away. And then I'm like the single loudest voice <laughs> in the thing when as the night is start coming back. And the whole bar is like, I cannot believe it. It was one of the greatest moments ever. Yeah. yeah as a Niners fan, you cherish something like that. It, it was oh, special. yeah. That's great, man. I love mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, Cog, you also did, um, saw some photos of you, man, with like Neil Druckmann and all that stuff. Yeah. What was going on there? Tell me about all that. Bro, shout out to the uh, New York Video Games Critic Circle. Um, I'm, I'm a member of it. And, you know, just try to, they basically, they've done the New York Game Awards for about 13 shows now. 13 mm-hmm. years, yeah. I was yeah. there. Oh yeah, Jay was in the building, of oh, course. Sick. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, man, it was it's just so cool because you know, as an East Coast guy, you know, we're so used to everything being on the West Coast. So I believe last year Phil Spencer won the Legends Award, and this year they were presented it to Neil Druckmann, and I've never met Neil before. Huge fan, obviously, and he's just so down to earth, so cool, mm-hmm. so cool. I mean, Gene, you've you've interviewed, you know, you you've had the luxury in interviewing him and stuff. I think for the show and stuff like that, it's a TV series, but like. It was just really cool to break bread with him and, and see how he thinks about things in the industry. And yeah, it was a moment I, I got to present. The Lords came through. Mm. And man, that was a night. That was a night. LSM was in the building. Ben was in the building. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, that was definitely one of those like you, you geek out moments. You're like, I cannot believe this is happening kind of situation. And it was a lot of fun. But yeah, go check that out. The uh, 13th Annual New York Game Awards. Up on, uh, they have a YouTube channel. And a lot. They have the video, mm-hmm. the VOD and all that stuff. Is that the venue where we're going to do the live show? It is. Is it yes. the same venue? Yes, it yeah. is. Exact same oh. venue. Yeah. So ben, ben was out there scoping out the place, and I've been there too. So Yeah, yeah. I was helping cool. Ben out. Scope is it nice? Too. Is yeah, it nice? It's, nice. it's, cool. it's real nice. Yeah. Old school theater st- a style, cozy, a lot of room for people. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun, man. We, we've got a lot of flexibility there. I, I'm excited. Ben's got stuff cooking, so I'm excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. very excited to meet everyone in person also when we get there. It's going to be really fun. Sci- excited to see the Iron Lords open up. That should be real fun. You already know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you coming out here in the East Coast, you know, Brad, I was always uh, the cop mentioned this, but, you know, uh, all the events are always happening out in the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I was always so jealous of you guys at Easy Ally Studios. Oh, yeah. you, you guys would just have like personalities like oh sliding in is Corey barlog here or yeah. blah, blah blah you know just just like whatever it's, like, yeah. I mean, like they would slide into like the kind of funny offices up in san francisco easily too that's crazy yeah it is really it was really convenient we were in culver city which is like pretty close mm-hmm. to lax so it's yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. when people were coming in town like we had ben Starr, who is clive rossfield in 16 right who's awesome he's an amazing guy 
Okay. So it was really fun to have people come in. But yeah, man, I'm excited to go to the East Coast. I was in New York last year oh. for the 16 preview event, but I was there for less than 24 hours. So it's been a little oh, bit you were, since actually. Oh, you came there. to New York for the 16 preview. Okay. Yeah. I, I was there. I was actually there too. I, 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 yeah. I must have missed you on like a different day. That would have been yeah. funny. Yeah, I forgot which day it was, but yeah, I'm excited to like walk around a little bit more and go to Central Park. I love Central Park, so it's real fun yeah. to go back. I'm excited to meet everyone. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun. a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a little um little warm up question for you guys. Since we got mm-hmm. Tekken Eight on the roster for today. I was thinking back my time with Tekken and it was in the arcade. How it all started with me is Tekken mm-hmm. back in the arcade. Tekken two specifically is where I like really played a lot of Tekken. I want to ask you guys about some of your fondest arcade memories or some of your earliest. Cause you know, the arcades mm-hmm. aren't really popping off like they used to when we were younger. They're still around. There's still a few, but it's not quite the same. You know, you're not going to an arcade to see the new fighting game. Really? You know, they're not getting it early on the, the cabinet there everything is like day and day at home now so i want to ask you guys about the arcade yeah i mean i'll jump it off um dear and dear it's funny you say that because my, my og old age go show now <laughs> 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 but uh yeah that's what i come from you know um Tekken specifically because you know i'm from the era and you appreciate like you'd go to the arcade to see the next generation in graphics that was ahead of console. So basically you're like, okay, where's the industry going? What's happening? And at the time, virtual fighters was all the rage and I'm a Sega kid. So I remember the virtual for how, how the fidelity of the game looked, it looked amazing. And I remember one com- coming to the arcade one time and I was like, what's this? And it was like, Namco had a game. And I'm like, all right, I'm checking it out, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, it looked good, but it definitely wasn't, virtual fighter. right but to your point then you know obviously Tekken 2 comes out you see the, the improvements the animations and stuff like that I'm like okay that's cool as far as fondest memory to your specific question because I was such a Tekken head I, I wish I was a rat like I wish like Evo and that stuff existed during my era because yeah. in my era it was the arcade fighting scene we had a spot in uh New York City's uh Chinatown where they were that's where the best Tekken players would play mm. and we've had competitive matches and stuff like that. So I used to go to, I would be in the scene and I'd, you know, try to compete against the, you know, the best players. So I'd never forget, I started to build a name. <laughs> so what <laughs> happens is this is the days of like game facts and, and message boards and people, like, Hey, this guy, Cognito Bronx, you know, he goes up there. He's really good. He's got, he's got a good, um, you know, lead or Kazuya. I was like, they call it like whatever your main character is. Like, he's mm-hmm. So you, you got to build a reputation. So, other people would talk about me and then it became a thing where it's like, okay, I'm, I think I'm better than him. We need to, you know, face off and stuff. So and this is crazy, Jim. Now that I think about it, we would like give each other's address and go to, to like, and pick like either a spot or either go to that person's house or the local arcade nearby. So there was one dude who built up a reputation who was one of the best in the area and he was like, and this is around Tekken 3, he's like, I'm one of the best Eddie Gordos or whatever. He's like, yeah, I'll beat you. Da, da, da. Okay, cool. Let's <laughs> me up. So one day this man literally pulls up in my on my block in a car. My friends t- hit me up and say, yo, your man is outside. He's speaking. He, they looking for you. So I come downstairs and he's like, now. It was like a martial arts movie. <laughs> Let's go to the local arcade now. Let's do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's like that. So I have my my gang with me of Tekken players. He has like two people in his car. He goes in his car. I get in my car. We go to the, the local arcade, which is now the formal uh formal the old Yankee Stadium. They had a bowling alley across the street that had a big arcade in it. So we get there, and of course, you know, the, the nerves, you, you know, you, you're ready. Yeah. And literally, like the first three seconds of the match, I picked Brian Fury and he picked Eddie Gordo. And I did a combo. I just I usually do something really powerful to see how good you are to see if you can adapt. And right. then the first five seconds, I evaporated this man's life ball, and the entire crowd is oh my! His friends turned on him. He was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this guy did that to you." So once I did that, I, I had him. I had him. And what it was so cool because it's the day 
of the competitive fighter when you're right next to somebody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not the online, and, you know, you got the ambiance, the pressure. So that's what I come from, like, the competitive aspect of the arcade. It's probably some of my fondest memory, Street Fighter, and all that stuff, Mortal Kombat. But Tekken was my baby. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember Tekken 3 specifically, that moment, and I snatched that boy heart. And he never talked to me ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome, dude. I love that. I remember playing some people at the arcade. I think I was a little younger than some of them at the time. What do you know? Do you remember what year Tekken Two came out? Whew, that's a good one. I can't remember the year Tekken Two came out. Mm. I'm trying to remember. remember the, the year's a little little shaky. I can't remember the, yeah. which year came out. I yeah. remember playing King of Fighters '98 and stuff like mm. that. And I was 11 at the time, so uh, I was fighting people you know who were like older teens and like 20s and stuff like that. I mean, I got my ass kicked a lot, but you learned a lot from those from getting your ass kicked. That's just kind of like what the you know, they talk shit and that's just the way it goes in fighting games. And that's just part of the, the culture. And yeah. it's really fun. Absolutely. Uh, it is. Gene, what about you, man? Yeah. Um, well, I always like to flex that, uh, you know, where that, that my fighting game uh, fandom goes all the way back to Street Fighter one, mm-hmm. you know, like Maximilian do may, may be the biggest Street Fighter two uh, fan out there, but he never played Street Fighter one uh, uh, when it came out. <laughs> I played Street Fighter 1 when it hit the arcades with the big, big buttons. Uh, so there's awesome. two buttons, and then you have to put uh, the, the harder you actually punch the button, that, that's what, that, that determines whether it's a light, medium, or hard punch. It was ridiculous. Uh, I was like, what, seven or eight when that happened? Uh, and I, I, I could only pull off a light punch. But I was really, really like, intrigued by this concept of just hitting a, a button as hard as you can um it, it felt like a carnival right uh mm-hmm. like, like kind of like hitting the the, the dumbbell right um mm-hmm. so it kind of, kind of felt like a carnival type affair um and then of course street fighter 2 came out and then i started going to going to the shaky's pizza Ooh. there was a shaky's pizza on guam that uh that had an arcade and that's where i played all of my street fighter 2 that's where i learned because nobody was going the arcade was was crowded and uh you know people always it, it, the, the people, kids are always finding ways to bully you, right? So, so, right. so kids find a way to bully me because I didn't know how to throw a fireball or do the, do the hurricane kick or whatever. So I started going to shake his pizza and I, st- I started training there. That's what I started. Mm. St- that's where I was learning how to do it. And then when I got bored, I'll play like the X-Men arcade, arcade machine there or the, mm-hmm. TFT or, mm-hmm. or the SNK Neo Geo uh, one where you can play, you can play uh, many different games. Um, I didn't even play a lot of SNK uh, fighting games. I played a lot of Metal Slug, like Magician Lord, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like like uh, like all, all all that cool stuff. Uh, yeah, I played so many arcade games, all the Capcom games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I you know I, I, I was addicted to Alien vs Predator. Uh, oh, I can't believe, so good. Like, yeah, I can't believe that that that's still not like released anywhere. Uh, Cadillacs and dinosaurs, you know, like like all like all the old school, great Capcom hits, you know. Um, oh, yeah. I, I can smell the bowling alley, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, you like, yeah, yeah. You, you, it's it's just a vibe, time, right? You know, the cigarettes yeah. and the beer and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then so I, I was just at Magfest, which is a game music, which is a music gaming fest here in uh, Maryland, mm-hmm. and uh, they fill out like a whole ballroom, a hotel, a hotel ballroom full of arcade machines, and it was just like I, I actually didn't play anything. I, I just stood there for the longest time and walked around and just like soaked in the atmosphere and the music and the sounds, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, th- th- there's an in joke at Magfest uh, where uh, everybody. Uh, mimics uh, Colossus from the X Men arcade game. Oh no! Uh, when he, do, <laughs> when he does a charge up and he goes, oh. so whatever you hear someone do that, like you know, like everyone in the in the convention or what, what, within within shouting distance has to start doing that too. Um, That's so and, funny. Yeah, it, it just it it just feeds into the atmosphere of like yeah, but we're here for gaming guys, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, man, yeah. arcades are special, definitely. Yeah certain energy definitely you know it's nice to be able to play at home definitely save mm-hmm. a lot of money exactly so yeah. so when you ask like well like what year tekken 2 came out it's like it, it, it was the year when i stopped going to arcades because <laughs> it, it was, it was, it, tekken 2 came out on the playstation one and it looked exactly like it does in the arcades and that's why tekken is a series that killed the arcades for me like for yeah. me at least because as Damn. soon as tekken came out on playstation one i was like there's nothing else we don't need anything yeah. else Bro. uh sega saturn mm-hmm. came, virtual fighter came out in sega saturn but it wasn't it, it, mm-hmm. it, it didn't look that good you know so no, you're right. That that was exactly what it was for me too. Because um, 
I remember getting PlayStation One, and and the talk of the time was Namco for Tekken One and Tekken Two. We're using the system. It was called the System Eleven board. Yes, and I I remember it. And I was like, wow, this is the animations look so cool. And then I remember getting the PlayStation. And you know, Gene, we're from that era. That when, the same thing. Yeah, like the arcade was always superior, mm-hmm. and then you get like a watered down mm-hmm. conversion, right? Mm-hmm. But this was like one to one, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh. I don't, like you said, I don't got to go to arcade anymore. Like, Brad, I'm sitting there like, this is literally what I played. And then not on top of that, they added so much extras to the home versions, right? It, it really became now, okay, now the the console has is, is on, on par and then eventually started to surpass. And mm-hmm. then slowly it started to go away. But to your, your earlier point, Gene, yeah, what I do remember about the arcade was just the scene, the, the lighting, the all, the all. It's like sensory overload, Brad, for like, mm-hmm. you, know, you, you come in there as a kid and you're just like, wow, this is so cool. And you wait to see what the new, you know, machine was that that came in. What's the new talk of the town? You remember, mm-hmm. when, remember when, um, it just showed you where the, ga- the games industry was going from a, either right. from a graphical fidelity standpoint or from engine standpoint. And I, I do miss that, you know, and I, I thank my dad for that because in New York we had some of the biggest arcade scenes of time, Times Square, mm-hmm. 42nd mm-hmm. Street, just these huge places. And yeah, man, it, it, it was a time. It, it was definitely a time. Was a time. <laughs> Mortal Kombat cabinet is always the fucking loudest here. It's oh crazy. my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to, to, to your uh, Street Fighter 1 story, remember how bad the audio was when you were, there are many fighters like you all oh, over yeah. the world. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, <laughs> Bro, it went, for uh, its time, we were amazed by it. When you look back at it, you laugh at the audio they had voice in yeah, it. But, 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 yeah, yeah, but then I'll, I remember when when they started talking, like street. <laughs> that that was exactly what what drew me to Street Fighter One. But the fact that yes. they was talking to me, and I was like, "Holy shit!" You know, video games <laughs> can talk right now. That's crazy. So let, yeah. let, 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 let me let me try this Street Fighter game. You know, because the guys going <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yes. like, 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 like a Char- Charlie Brown like adult or whatever. But I'm like, yes. "Oh yeah, dude, it's crazy." <laughs> you know, uh, Street Fighter One. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Damn, dude. Um, shout out also to just Ski Ball at the arcade. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I love Ski Ball, man. Okay. Still to this day, I'll hit it up if I see one yeah. in there. No, nothing but a good ski. To, mm-hmm. to, nothing Ooh. but nailing a good ski. And I'm, I'm not even yeah. like, nothing sexual about that, too. It's like, seriously, yeah. just like, just like, just like hitting that ball down the lane and, and it just, just goes whoop. Yeah. So yeah. good, man. So good. Yeah. Love both also, those games. Sorry, yeah. please. Also, shout out to Metal Slug. I'll never oh, forget the first time oh, yeah. I played Metal Slug. Man, I was blown away. The animations of that game are still gorgeous to this day. Mm-hmm. All right, dudes. Let's actually let's get into what we're playing, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the gaming wave has begun. The Japanese gaming wave, dude. The tsunami is hitting us hard. Mm-hmm. We're kicking off with two humongous games on the same exact day, also. Mm-hmm. We're going to start with Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Mm. Gene, I know you've played a ton of this. Cog, I know you're playing a little bit of it at least, too. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Gene, we'll start with you since you've played the most. Yeah, uh, I, I I played it for review. Uh, I beat it. Uh, I guess can, I guess this would be clo- the closest thing to my review because I, I have actually haven't published a review yet. But uh, I lo- absolutely loved it. Um, mm-hmm. It is um it is easily the biggest Yakuza game, uh, easily the biggest maps. Uh, Honolulu is easily the biggest world uh, uh, that Yakuza has ever seen. Um, it's you know uh, I've talked a lot about like how I used to live there and everything like that, but it's still crazy how it starts starts from my apartment and ends at my ex girlfriend's old bikini shop um, in Waikiki. <laughs> oh, um, but th- that's a that's a huge stretch of land right there. That's that's a, that's a, that's basically most of the city, at least the southern part of the, part of Honolulu City. Um, and it's 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 a long game. Uh, it's one of those games where you when when you hit the halfway point, uh, you realize, oh, I got that much left to do, and I got th- there's this much left to do. Mm. Um, uh, the combat is incredible. It's so much more fun than than, than even the last one. Oh, uh, the, okay. Uh, the, 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 the last one, you know, it's in real time 3D, right? Um, mm-hmm. Where you hit the random battles. But in the last game, uh, you couldn't move, you control your character's movements. It was just like a, a turn based battle, and then you're just in, you're just in it, right? You choose your action, and the, and the character would do the action. Now the, uh, each character has a, a, a sphere of movement around them, so you can actually position each character um, to, to hit 
to actually hit certain lanes of area time. You, you want to talk about skee ball. Like uh, the, the, sometimes <laughs> you, can, you can just hit like hit lanes of like five people if you aim it just right. Um, so combat is even more engaging that way uh, where, where you're always looking to target uh, groups of enemies, uh, even in terms of heals. Uh, uh, Certain heals can only be, be AOE, but if you actually navigate your character, your healer in between uh, the party, then boom, it's a full party heal. Uh, nice. it's, it's, right. it's so wonderful, very strategic. You can definitely uh, mess around with the movement system around to to make things just so much better. Um, every time you do a regular attack, um, every character will will heal MP. So it, it, it definitely, it, you know, I, I, that that in itself makes it better than every turn-based RPG ever made, you know, because I, I because that it incentivizes you to use your regular attack, and also it's, it's just nice to get to get your MP, so you can just keep you know having a like a diverse set of attacks uh, as some of the longer fights are going, you know. Um, they learned from the first game. The first game had a huge difficulty spike that no one saw coming. Mm-hmm. Um, right. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> in terms of a boss battle, that, that, that's, that suddenly like, the, the fucking enemies are like, like 30, 20 le- levels above you. There's none of that here. Uh, it, it, there's definitely a, a, a boss battle like that when you hit it. But uh, the, the game is basically structured and designed in a way where but, but by the time you hit that part, the, the, you, should, you should totally be fine. Sure. Um, what, what else is there to talk about? Uh, so many different characters that join your party, uh, so many different jobs, so many different mini games. Uh, Let's talk about some of the jobs. What are some of the new ones? Oh yeah, a uh, hula dancer, uh, oh, uh, sur- sur- surfer great. boy. Uh, the hula dancer is crazy. Uh, you know, uh, the, 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 even the regular jobs for the regular characters. Uh, the, the, the cab driver Eric Tomizawa, uh, the, the, which you, you know, you know how cab drivers uh, are always trying to scam a, a new tourist that like to come into the city. Right. So he's kind of like that kind of guy too. To, you know, <laughs> it's, it's really, really funny. Um, I actually didn't mess with the job system too much though, because I actually li- like sticking with uh, the, the the basic jobs that mm-hmm. characters come with. You know, I like I like Sako Chan as as the hostess girl. You know, uh, so, mm, so, right. so I keep her as that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so many different mini games. Uh, this game has a fucking. Not only does this game has an Animal Crossing game, and I'll talk. I'll definitely talk about that very deeply in a bit. But this game has a rogue like a procedural rogue like dungeon uh, uh, section. Whoa. Uh, that, that that gives you the best rewards, like the, you get the best like like weapons and armor in that shit. So it definitely behooves you to do it. Um, yeah, it's basically all, it's just procedural dungeons, you know, um, and it's just a roguelike. Um, this game has a whole uh, Pokemon catching game called Sujimon, except <laughs> it, 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 except you just keep going with more content, Gene. Like this game yeah. sounds incredibly stacked. No, no, no. And then the Sujimon aspect actually feeds feeds into the Animal Crossing aspect. Uh, so the game suddenly becomes fucking Power World. Uh, so as I'm catching these humans around around Honolulu, they have different trait sets, and I take them back to my my Dodongo Island, Animal Crossing Island, and I, I and I literally really set them to the fields to work it's it's the same thing as fucking power world it's crazy <laughs> yeah. so not only does the game already have power world in it and animal crossing and pokemon and a roguelike procedural procedural dungeon but it also has a crazy taxi uh delivery game uh no where, way where, really yeah where you're an uber eats bicycle bicycle uh delivery person uh but it's, it's not it's not crazy taxi it's crazy eats Oh and, and man! Some crazy Axel, you got crazy Charlie with the green hair uh, <laughs> pumping you out. So you got they got a full on crazy taxi game in here. Plus, of course, the arcade games. You got Virtual Fighter Three, you got Virtual mm. Fighter Five, you got Spike Out for some reason. The game that I've never played before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kaga, have you heard of Spike Out? Yeah, I, you know I never played that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never played that. I never played that. I play. I played it in this game. It sucks, but you know, whatever. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> And uh, what what else is there? There's another fucking game uh, in in this game. Um, I'm already forgetting. The Animal Crossing game is crazy though. What I what uh, the, 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 the it's a required mission, right? To to play mm-hmm. around with the Animal Crossing mission. When mm-hmm. I played around with that, I was like, this game is gonna get too deep. I will never finish this game for the review part if I fuck around with the Animal Crossing por- Animal Crossing portion part. And mm-hmm. I was right. My friend Rumbi, who, who's a, who's a Twitch streamer. Uh, mm-hmm. She just spent the last two streams. They're both ten-hour streams, doing nothing but just playing that. The oh my time. god, dude! <laughs> oh my god! So she and so now she has a five-star resort, and she was able to get Goro Majima onto her resort. 
because, wow. you, can, because you can get like the legacy characters uh, to, to visit your Animal Crossing oh, island, dope. and they just live there. So now she she just has Kiryu and Majima and Shun Akiyama just running around. Like she just has like all the hottest dudes like running around her <laughs> island, you know. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to get on right now. Uh, the <laughs> Animal Crossing Island is not only an Animal Crossing Island where you're like clearing the island uh, full of trash and you're like placing certain like houses or whatever like that, but you're actually uh, uh, like leaving entire like buildings. So like I got like a whole like ramen restaurant there. I got a karaoke restaurant there or, or, or bar there. I got I got a hostess bar there. I got a whole love motel there. So this place <laughs> this place looks like little like mini Camarocho. Like the, the place already looks like a little city with like street lights and everything like that. Yeah, so it's got a so and you're able to portion it out by districts. So that's why Roomby was able to to create a whole sleazy district full of like. The the gambling parlors and, and, and everything so Majiba can go live there mm-hmm. um, and right now I just have a bunch of guests right now and I'm trying to make them happy by making sure that, th- that their houses are nice and I'm giving them an, enough entertainment but I'm also trying to raise my popularity enough so I'm leaving around like cool signs and I'm trying to like fun TV commercials dude this game just keeps going on and on and on like I don't know when you want me to stop talking but well first we'll go to COG Gene, Yo. I know you have more to say on this. We'll start with Cog. Um, mm-hmm. Cog, you know, all the Like a Dragon Yakuza games, man, they've all pretty much been in Japan. We've been in Kamurocho a lot. We've been like Yokohama. But now we're in the States finally, which I think is a very cool shakeup because like, I love the Yakuza games a lot. But, you know, we've been to these locations, especially if you play the side games like Judgment, Lost Judgment. Like you've been in these places so much. But now we're in a completely new area. How is that? How's the shakeup for you? Does it feel like significant? Yeah, it, it's a great tonal change because again, it, it just right. like Hawaii just seems like the perfect backdrop for it. And like for me, that's one of the things I like. And what I, I just love about RGG, they just do not take themselves seriously. Right. You know, and like just playing a Yakuza game for the first time and then playing it in Hawaii, and then you see like mysterious men, you know, thugs, like just the enemy types and the way they're described. And then, of course, obviously the way each of the character views everything, like it's a Dragon Quest games, which makes that extra hilarity to it. Right. But like, yeah, to me, one of the things that really outside of that, what really stood, stood out, what Gene said, is actually that cab driver guy. Mm-hmm. Because I'm the person that re- when I really fell in love with the Like a Dragon series was kind of like what you consider the summons, the pound mates and all that. All the over the top cinematics that I feel like because now it's turn based, they can do this stuff. They have liberties with it. And I remember he threw him like he, he threw a, he's a cab driver. He throws you in the back of his cab and gives you the, the worst ride ever. And then like <laughs> dives off and the, the cab explodes. And then he walks with this cool backdrop. And I'm just like, this game is ridiculous. But to your point, yeah, Hawaii is amazing. And then the segues. And then what's that game, Gene, that had me down? There's a mini game called like Sicko Catch. So oh, yeah, like yeah. that. Dude, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so Sicko Catch is literally Pokemon Snap. Yes. You're going down the, the, the trolley bus, the, 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 the tourist trolley bus, but instead instead of like whatever Pokemon vehicle that was in Pokemon Snap, and you're going down Waikiki, and then all, all of these sicko perverts are just coming out, and you're taking photos of them like it's Pokemon Snap. Yes. No. So like that's why this whole power war controversy that felt ridiculous to me because I I just came off of Infinite Wealth, which is literally just a Pokemon game inside a, like in, inside a Yakuza game, which is crazy. You know? Facts, bro. Yeah. I was howling. I'm like, I know I am not on a trolley taking pictures of muscle dudes, and then the way they do it is hilarious. and they be hard to find. Like you got you got to really look at like you know, use the camera. It's absolutely hilarious. And again. Game does not take itself serious. But then the, the flip side about the Hawaii part is then we see where the two characters are at this point in their life, mm-hmm. especially, you know, obviously Kiryu, the, the main protagonist of most of the series, and then, you know, Ichiban, the new one. And for me, I've all, I'll be honest, like I am late to the series. Like I've, I started with Like a Dragon. So mm-hmm. Ichiban is kind of my guy. I had to play catch up mm-hmm. with Kiryu with Like a Dragon Gaiden and the man who raised his name. And then it really hit hard for me, like, man, okay, mm-hmm. he's, he's been through some things. You know what I'm saying? I got a respect level for him. So now it's just so cool, you know, for me that the thing that was hard to, for that initial meetup and to see them interact more and stuff like that, because I believe Like a Dragon Gaiden was going on a little bit before 
um, the re- regular like a dragon was going. So you got to see what Kiryu was doing at that mm-hmm. point, mm-hmm. and then you know uh, Ichiban. But yeah, man, it, it's been it's been a, a great ride. I, I love it right now, and I'm I'm having a ton of fun. I obviously, you know, Gene talked about the, the combat system. You know, I, I am a Lord Turn Base, so I think this is the correct mm-hmm. way to go about <laughs> it. You know, it, it's way for no disrespect to the older games. I get mm-hmm. it. You know, the beat 'em up stuff, but it just I think what is. As a Sega kid who loved Shinmu, Yakuza always felt like the spiritual successor. Oh, 100% mm-hmm. it was. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Dude, dude, they mention Shenmue in this game. Did you did get you out? No way, they do? No, gee. They literally, they, bro, bro, they literally mention real, real Hazuki in this game. Whoa. Do you, do you want me to do what? Do, do you want no, me we'll to say, tell we'll you about say it? We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. Yeah, we'll see it with the back. But yeah, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, no, no, you're awesome in there, and they know it too. They know it they too. Know it. Yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, like a dragon was your first game. That's that's dope. That's yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's my cool. First game. Yeah, I think you would like the brawler games, though. Uh, the, it, first of all, you're a Sega guy, right? Uh, so so the, the, they are classic Sega brawlers. Mm-hmm. So they remind me of, like of Streets of Rage, uh, mm-hmm. but they also remind. They, they, it's basically a virtual fighter RPG. You know these yeah. games. You know? Yeah, they that's are. That's literally yeah. what Shenmue yeah. was to me, and yeah. I remember when Shenmue came out. How at its time. It mm-hmm. truly changed the game. I've never seen anything like that. Yu yeah, Suzuki right. was cooking. I was just like, yeah. wow, this yeah, is amazing. He, he came from the future with that game, you know? Yeah, yeah he yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, let's get to this question because this reminds sure. me of what you just brought up, Cog. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zeke the Plumber wrote in, Zeke. Dear Bodacious Brad, Lord Acquisition Cog, and Gene Park from the Washington Post. I've owned Yakuza Like a Dragon since it launched on PS5, but I've yet to play it. It's kind of stuck in my backlog hell. Infinite Wealth is getting rave reviews. Do you think I'd be able to jump to the new game just fine without playing the former, or should I power through Yakuza Like a Dragon as fast as, po- as fast as possible before playing Infinite Wealth? Thanks. You're all wonderful. Keep on summoning. What do you guys think? I haven't played any of Infinite Wealth yet, so it's hard for me to say. Gee, that's I would say no. Infinite Wealth starts immediately off uh, with uh, not just not just like the, the story, but like the character moments that that, that, that the game begins with. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, the, you need to understand the relationships that these characters have with each other to for for these moments at the beginning right. to really really hit. Um, you should play like a dragon uh, first, yeah. and honestly, it's it's really uh, and, and Kagwa attested is it's really one of those uh, new modern perfect RPGs. It's it's one of those is one of those really really good ones, you know, like Persona Five and Persona Four. It's join it's joined that tier, you know. Yeah, completely agree, Jane. I think that Infinite Wealth, the way it starts, is a little slow, and I feel like. It starts it off will, very slow, yes. Yeah, it, 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 it starts off super slow, slow if you don't know what's going on. It, it starts off really, if you okay. start really, really good if you know what's going on. Right? Yes. Yeah. So if you have no context, you're going to be like, <clears throat> "What are people talking about? Why?" Yeah. Like you might get angry. Like for for us, you're like, "Oh, okay, I <laughs> see where the character is at <laughs> in a post like a dragon world now, and this is and it makes it, and it's absolutely hilarious. I, <laughs> we gonna get to so this, funny, this, so funny, so funny. Like you, you he. He's just a lovable idiot, and you got to mm-hmm. love Yichiba. He's just the goofball with the biggest heart, but you love him. But, yeah, I highly recommend, bro. Like, you have to do Like a Dragon first. Now, again, if you want extra context, especially with Kiryu's situation, I recommend doing um Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who raised his name. And also it gives you a feel of the older style Yakuza games, and it's got the agent mode and all this other cool stuff. Or you can do traditional style, and then it'll lead you right into. So that, that's just me recommended. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. I, you played Gaiden, so that was like your first time playing the beat 'em up version, right? Yeah, that was my first time. You yeah. liked it though, right? I, I liked I liked the changes because I was I'm gonna assume Agent Mode wasn't in the old game. So no, no, right? a, 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 Agent Mode is him cutting up for this game for sure. So, <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. so for me, that's how they got me with they with the little lasso and, <laughs> and rope, and then you got the shoes and you're doing yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The jet shoes. Yeah, that was for me. So I look, I, I hated the control. Because I um, felt like the targeting, he doesn't target correctly. It was like mm-hmm. a little archaic. But once you get into the rhythm of it, you get used to it. But still feel the correct decision is turn base. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, sure. and it was cool, mm-hmm. but I like where they're at now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like both, personally. Mm-hmm. I think deals, or I think it was a really good idea to make it turn base, though. I think mm-hmm. with how many Yakuza games there are, it definitely kind of needed a shake-up, in my opinion, from a gameplay standpoint. And so I'm really happy they did add 
turn base. Mm. Uh, one of my problems, though, I guess, with like a dragon is I do like turn based combat, but I felt like it kind of just got repetitive at a certain point because there were so many encounters. I felt like mm-hmm. in that game, is that kind of the same vibe in this one, or is it feeling a little more fresh? No, I actually look forward to. It. I, I'm with you that the the the, the counters got pretty repetitive in the last game. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, again, with the with the ability to move around with the with the new AOE attacks, uh, the, the 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 fact that you can do regular attacks so often, uh, they don't interrupt regular attacks anymore. You you know how you would try to do a regular attack, and if there was an enemy in between you and the person you're trying to attack, then that that person in between would interrupt. That mm-hmm. doesn't happen anymore. So they was that that person would just get out of the way. So the fights move so fast too uh the in that regard uh but also yeah just just the fact that you're able to just move things around uh that that the guard engage is still going on too and and you're doing all Mm -hmm. the special moves with the the tapping and everything like that Mm -hmm. all that so i I think they really did just enough to make the fights feel less repetitive than the last one because i did feel that the last game was repetitive i was pretty tired of it and I i actually bounced from the game because I thought that the game the game was too repetitive at first. Mm. But Infinite Wealth, okay. I kept going at it, and I was actually looking forward to fights too. Yeah, wow. it, to, to mm-hmm. add on for you, Brad, is that what I also like is that what I feel is a nice callback for all uh, Kiryu fans who are not in the turn base. He plays completely different, so like he actually could switch styles, and he has like true combat and combos. You mm-hmm. get really interactive with yeah. him. I thought that was a nice touch. For they, because I feel RGG must realize, okay, there are going to be people who are playing this probably for the first time, and they want to play with Kiryu in the way that they're comfortable with playing him. And I thought that was a nice little addition to the combat. So, I yeah. think I think that's a genius addition. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I, you know, I've played Yakuza, you know, zero through all the, I played all the mainline ones essentially. But so it is mm-hmm. nice to be in a turn based world. Feel like because Kiryu is such a high power level character like a, mm-hmm. a legend everyone knows this man and so him breaking essentially the rules of the game to fight how he wants to fight is so beautiful i'd love that yeah very uh, cool gene we're talking about hawaii obviously where you pretty much lived at a point in your life how mm-hmm. has that been for you yeah it's so surreal uh it it's probably it's probably very similar to people who uh, live in kabuki cho or have visited kabuki cho you know uh, i've never actually vi- uh, been to that area before but i've been to uh, many areas like it um so part of the reason why i like the yakuza series so much is because it reminds it really reminds me that i'm in asia right mm-hmm. I, it, it reminds me of a lot of places in korea too these really tight alleyways and these bright signs and everything and you never know the, what kind of shady business is in is in all, all of these buildings um <laughs> That's what it was. For, for, that that's the, the, this is the Hawaiian version of it, you know. Where I'm walking around, I'm walking around my old neighborhoods. Uh, I'm walking around uh, Chinatown, where there was a lot of clubs and bars. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm walking around uh, the, the the old downtown neighborhood where, where it's all marked up with graffiti, and that was great because that's uh, all the graffiti is actually a project by a friend of mine. Uh, where he actually invited a bunch of graffiti artists from all over the world to come to Hawaii and, and mark up our warehouses, wow. and to see to see that represented in the game is amazing. Wow. Um, but it, you know, it'll be obvious because it, it, once you get well, once you get to a certain part of town, you see all the graffiti, um, mm-hmm. and it's it's really hard to ignore. Uh, they they recreated Ala Moana Shopping Center, which is uh, if you grew up in Honolulu, it's a it's a mall that you always go to. Uh, you grow you grow up there, so it's it's it, it was surreal to have turn-based fantasy a uh, role-playing combat in the parking lot of, 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 of the shopping center where where uh where i covered uh the case of uh one of the dog the bounty hunter associates masturbating uh, in the parking lot um <laughs> <laughs> off in the parking lot and then so we kept going back to the to the scene of the crime and we'd be like oh well, well, well how, how, how was he doing it and everything like that and then I'm like, yeah, like reenacting it or something. Like, yeah, and, and then here I am, like at the mall, I'm just like, holy shit, it's crazy, you know. Um, uh, yeah, the, the hotels are all there. Uh, the, the the beach is there. Uh, you know, I did a stream on Saturday where I talked about like, oh yeah, here's the share to Moana Surfrider. That's where so I, cool. I, I wa- like, like I walked to and, and you know, and I, I ran into command there. Blah blah blah. It's 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 wow. it's so crazy. It really feels very very realistic. Yeah, why? That's cool. But, 
that's an awesome stream idea, Gene. I'm really happy you did that. I didn't watch yeah. it because I didn't want spoilers because I haven't played the game yet. But when I start walking around, I'm definitely gonna check that stream out, man. You, you, you know, you know who I stole that idea from? I actually stole it from uh, Gabby and Hubert, Easy Allies. Oh, they did it with Spider Man. That's it with right, Spider Man. Yeah, and yeah, Spider Man. I, I was like, I should do that with different wealth. You know, yeah, so, that's so cool, yeah. man. Yeah. I'd love. That was that. a good idea for them too. So yeah, 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 yeah to totally. Yeah, yeah, man. I really want to play this game. It's coming out at a bad time for me. It is. I just played um, Guidance, so I'm I'm like cool. You know, I'm good. I'm definitely gonna play this game, but I'm like I got I'm gonna space it out a little because like I don't want to get burnt out essentially. Yeah, because the burnout is real. It's real. Real. It's real. Because like I played, I think I played three, four, and five back to back one time, and it was just that's crazy. Yeah, it was too much. It was too much. Especially ending with five, because five is so long, and, and five, five is, is so, so long. Yeah. Five is so long. It's a, it's like uh-huh. that, that's when the burnout really, really hits you once you hit five. So. Yeah, uh, Cog. Now that you mm-hmm. you're you're big into the series, man, mm-hmm. do you have any desire to go back to the older games? Or are you no. good? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't get mad at me. I, I look. Hey, 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 no, don't no yeah. one get mad at Cog. You know. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, a lot a, of this games is, this is a big internal fight with me and Maddie as well mm. as the um the Rome of the Dukes because the hardcore you know they're like hog I get it like you but you gotta go back like the, the stories mm. and I, I I believe them I, don't get me wrong I get it it's just that for me I see like a dragon is the future of the series and mm. it's just more of a gameplay choice decision for me it was just like I really love this turn based combat got it like mm. so much and as a person I remember when I I looked at like a dragon and I was like completely new to the series I'm like man should I play it and I remember saying I probably shouldn't initially I said I probably shouldn't because mm-hmm. I probably need the backstory so I probably gotta go play the old ones but I'm like damn I really want to play this mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so my friend I spoke to a friend of mine who played all of them and he's like look Cog, at the end of the day don't let them don't let them pressure you he said it's basically a fresh start with a new protagonist mm-hmm. now granted he said there are gonna be some moments that are gonna really hit hard for Yakuza fans and veterans that they're going to understand the extra significance of certain moments. But mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, when I played Like a Dragon for the first time before Infinite Wealth, I actually felt RGG did a good job of informing me that th- these people are significant. Mm-hmm. You know, And then it was up to me to go, okay, let me find well, out. When, when you more. saw Majima, you're like, okay, he's, he, 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 he's like, him. Okay, he's yeah, him. Clear, right. yeah, clearly, right this is significance. And I'm like, yeah. okay. And that's what really inspired me to do Like a Dragon Guided and, and, and mm-hmm. really understand Kiryu because I was like, okay, because mm-hmm. I think it, there was a big war between me and Maddie. Like, I am team Ichiban all day, every day. Maddie hates <laughs> Ichiban. He's like, he's Maddie a... Maddie hates a, Ichiban? That's oh, crazy. He's what the fuck? Maddie's like, he's a simp. He's a, <laughs> he's a clown. That's Bro, crazy. Holy him, shit. Man. Okay, Maddie, you're and crazy. Then, it, here, yeah, bad, bro, <laughs> that's how bad it got on the final new. It got so bad because I forgot what game we both pressured each other to play and beat each other's game. And mine mm-hmm. was like, I'm like, bro, you got to play like a dragon. It's amazing. It's this, it's that. And then he's like, I think his at the time was like, bro, he got mad at me for uh, wanting to try Phoenix Attorney, Ace Attorney. And right. he's like, that's the that's the garbage. You need to play Dang and Rompa. So I got bullied into Dang and Rompa. And he got bullied <laughs> into like a dragon. <laughs> so I played Dang and Rompa, gave my impressions. We had the show. But he didn't get around to get to like a drag. He got caught up with some other series. And the, mm. the, the Robert Dukes are all. He was like, you fraud. God played your game. Mm-hmm. You didn't play his game. So this is my honest assessment. He came into Like a Dragon kind of kicking and scratching because he really wanted to play his Trails games. He didn't want to interrupt that. You know how oh, you, you want to yeah. play? You know how that mentality is, right? You really, yeah. your heart is in this zone of playing a game that you want to play. And now you're getting forced to play something else. Yeah. So that's pretty much what happened. So when he came into it, he was like, it's cool, but, you know, he already had his thing. And he's, <laughs> he's like, cure you all day. So that's where the rivalry. So I kind of mm-hmm. had to let my cure you hate go. After like a um like a dragon guided the man who raised his yeah. name because I thought it was really cool. And I, yeah. I, I got a feel, but I, as a person, I, I personally feel that I have the the backstory and I'm I'm caught up. Mm-hmm. But you know, so I'm good and I like where it's at now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked the, the new cast and like a dragon. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, Kiryu is the goat because I've been with him for so long and he's just incredible. But I like Ichiban. I'm glad he's very different and goofy and more goofy than uh, Kazuma and all that stuff. So I think that's mm-hmm. really important. Like the fact that he loves Dragon Quest is just like it's pandering to me. It's like, OK, dude, mm-hmm. like, yeah, like I'm sure Gene feels the same way. It's just like, OK, 
we love you immediately now. So yeah, well, how, how am I not supposed to like this guy? You know? Yeah, how how can yeah. I not like this guy? Yeah, uh, Gene, if you want any, if you want to get a little more story specific, now's the time. You can do some spoilers if you want. If you are nervous about spoilers for this game, anything story like that, get out now. Go to the next timestamp. Mm-hmm. You've been warned, Gene. If there's anything you want to say, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, I will say that I do think that the, the the motivators for the story were a little bit weaker than in Part 7. Okay. Uh, part 7 had a really, really strong personal story for Ichiban. Uh, you know, you really wanted to figure out, like, what, like why he was in a situation. Uh, with 8, they have to build the case up, and you can feel the game, like, trying to write a, a case for him, mm-hmm. getting to Hawaii and him staying there. And you can feel the game write a way to, for Kiryu to also be there and for him to really, really care about Ichiban's case, too. Mm-hmm. So you, you feel the writers, like, really kind of, not really struggle, uh, because because if, if it was struggling, then you, you might feel feel the game is bad, right? right? But then you definitely feel like, okay, they're definitely kind of reaching to make sure that Kiryu and, and, and Ichiban, uh, Ichiban's stories intersect in a way that, that would be, that would make sense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but these games usually do that, though. Uh, these games uh, they usually kind of sag in the middle a little bit, as right. they're, they're, because they're, they're they're trying to keep the game going, they're trying to keep the story going. Sometimes the plot is plot twists don't make any sense because like like oh this person is just that person all of a sudden. Uh, you know, my favorite trope is uh, the, something called the secret Korean trope. Where uh, they've been doing it since Yakuza One, where uh, uh, one person you didn't realize it was actually Korean, and they were part <laughs> of the, Kore- the Korean mafia, and you're like, "Oh shit, yeah. they're part of the Korean mafia!" Yeah. And then that just like changes up the whole story, and then so they keep do- doing that 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 trope again, over and over again, where it's just like, "Oh shit, they're actually secretly Korean." Um, <laughs> Which is great for Infinite Wealth because now in Infinite Wealth you actually have two Korean party members. So, so that, mm-hmm. that, that's how you know that that RGG is getting a lot more progressive. That they're 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 able to bury <laughs> the, the, the the old classic racism uh, yeah. against yeah. Koreans down, that's which really? I love. Uh, <laughs> I never held anything against them. I, I I get it. I get it. I totally get it. You know, this is, sometimes we be racist. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the ex- context you give it. This is dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, I, I mean. The, that that's the, the the Asian diaspora good going on right there, right? Yeah. Uh, but but that being said, the game ends so strong, and I, and I will really really need to avoid yeah. talking about the ending even in the spoiler section. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, the way they wrap up Ichiban's story is incredible, mm-hmm. and the way they wrap up Kiryu's story, especially if you know, uh, yeah, I mean, we're in the spoiler mm-hmm. section, so 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 we can talk about it. But but yeah. uh, because they talk about it in the trailers, yes. uh, but Kiryu has cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that was a that was a crazy thing for me to find out. I didn't even know about it until after I finished Gaiden, and mm-hmm. I went back to the story trailer of, of of Infinite Wealth, and I was like, "Wait, did you talk about it in trailers? That's crazy." Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have been a crazy thing to find out in the game. It's still a crazy. It's still a crazy thing to find out in the game. Um, so, as a cancer cancer patient myself, I was really worried about how they were going to handle it. Um, you know, I even got messages from from some of my followers asking, "Hey, how do they talk about the cancer? Is it because you know because some of my followers also have cancer, mm-hmm. so they want to make sure you know is there anything game that might be triggering?" For me, I don't think there was anything in the game that was very triggering because they don't really okay. talk about like what kind of treatment he's getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're mostly talk about like. The, the the game mostly deals with how he thinks and how his his mindset is changing now that mm. he has cancer and he only has mm. half a year to live, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why they, they actually talk about how Kiryu has a, a bucket list, and that mm-hmm. actually ends up becoming a Ubisoft style checklist of shit that, that you got to finish off uh, uh, awesome. uh, for Kiryu before he dies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cog, were, were you going to ask something real quick? Yeah, two questions. One, yeah. um, in reference to how obviously how much this must hit for you because of that situation with Kiryu and then obviously being Hawaii. Like this game seems to be hitting all these notes for you on a personal level. Mm-hmm. So I want to get your opinion on that. And then the second thing is, do we ever do anything about his look 
in this game. Do we get class? <laughs> I, I got to oh, ask you. Mean but, Kiryu's yeah, hair? Yeah, I'm mean? not <laughs> feeling this new look. So okay. my thing, because I, when I play like a draft, I was like, oh, this is the smooth James yeah. Bond, the fly dapper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yakuza mob, you know what I mean? With, a, with an OG and history. That's, that's how he's been since 1988, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so when I see the, 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 you know, the scraggly little hair, and I'm like, what's going on? Now, I knew, obviously, the trailers talked about, you know, cancer and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, I guess my question is like, are we, are we stuck with that look <laughs> mm-hmm. throughout with, with him? So those are the two oh. questions I have for you. I'll answer the second question. It's a very easy uh, question to ask. The reason why he looks like he looks a little bummy with the hair Mm -hmm. is because, and I can confirm, when you have cancer, you get a little bummy. Okay, okay. that's it. Okay, you you just stop caring about your hair. You know, Mm -hmm. so like even for me, like 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 that's why I start wearing hats a lot because I stop Mm -hmm. caring about my hair. I I, I don't have cancer anymore, but Mm -hmm. when he did have cancer. I would just let it fall just like this. And it would just mm-hmm. it'd be like that. Mm, you know? I see. That's and fair. that's basically what Kiryu, Kiryu is doing right now. That's fair. Um, that's fair. So, and you know, the, give, the give him some off. slack, you know. All dude, right. dude, dude, every, every time Kiryu got hit in the Infinite Wealth, I was like, please stop punching the man with cancer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't like to see this. The ah. man has cancer. Stop doing special attacks on him. For fuck's okay. sake, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Stop doing critical attacks on him. He is my party member and he has cancer. Stop yeah. it. You know? uh, to your Hilarious. first question, it is wild to see like RGG basically like take their game and like p- put it over my life, basically. Yes. Um, it was trip- trippy, you know, like like Kiri has cancer and now it's in Hawaii. Um, very, very, very trippy. Uh, I was, again, like, like, yeah, definitely getting to that point where uh, where I was getting, to, I was I was going to talk about how the the story uh, uh, felt for me as a cancer patient. I thought mm-hmm. uh, they handled it so well. So, mm-hmm. and if you don't know, Ryosuke Hori, who is not only the director of Like a Dragon and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, but he mm-hmm. is the writer of all the karaoke songs. Bakamitai, wow! Wow! Bakamitai, Judgment, uh, all all those songs. He wrote all those songs because he is a dedicated karaoke master. Okay. <laughs> when he uh, when he applied to Sega and uh, Nagoshi San, uh, he the Nagoshi San says, "Well, what's what's so unique about you? I, I want unique people in, on my team, right?" Mm-hmm. And then Ryosuke Hori says, "Well, I I, I love karaoke, right?" Mm-hmm. And then Nagoshi San says, "Well, we all love karaoke. <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not unique." <laughs> you know? yeah. And he's and then he was like, "Oh shit!" So Real Estate Hori says, "Well, actually, I've actually like like collated and 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 documented every single karaoke song I've ever sung before." And he brought out this fucking like data book of and and where Real Estate wrote down every single song that he's ever sung, and it was two thousand five hundred songs that he wrote down. And wow. then Nagoshi san was like, okay, well, that's actually weird. So you're hired. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so so Yosuke cool. Hori is so obsessed with karaoke and he wrote all these songs and they were so, so good. But not only that, he also had cancer. Wow. He had intestinal cancer and he survived. Oh, so, uh, so, so, and I'll talk about, talk about this more in my story that, that, that I'm actually writing as of today, but he, we, we the, him and I talked a little bit about both being cancer patients and, and what it was to, to write about the, to write about this game. And I think, mm-hmm. uh, the way he addressed it is ob- like, I was like, obviously this man had cancer and he survived because like he's coming at it, at it from a perspective that's really, 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 really well done. And I think that they handled it really well. But by the time I got to the end of Curious Story, I was like, I was like, that's it. Mm. I, was, I, was, I was like, I was so worried about how they were going to handle it, you know, especially because mm, yeah, the question is, is he going to live or is he going to die? Right. I want to, yeah. I'm not going to answer that question. Yeah, don't, in the podcast. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. I don't yeah I'm not going to answer that question. That, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that, that's, that's like Aerith. That's like yes, finding yes. out what happens to Aerith and Rebirth right now. Right. It's yeah, Ch- yeah. and Aerith right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man! Uh, so I want to answer that question right now, but I think the yeah. way they the, what they handle whatever happened was mm. incredible and perfect. Nice, you know. Look, now, now people also ask me, did I cry as much as I did at the end of Like a Dragon Guide End? And I, and I won't spoil Like a Like a Dragon Guide End here, but. Uh, the ending for Like a Dragon Gaiden left Ooh. me in tears. I'm not sure if I ever cried uh, like harder than I, than I ever did for video game than, than I did for Like a Dragon Gaiden. Yeah. Infinite Wealth did not make me cry as hard, but I mm-hmm. think the ending was more perfect. 
if, if that makes oh. sense. So. Okay, that's that's huge. I'm glad you yeah. said that because yeah. I don't know, Brad. You 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 you're going through the man who raised his name, or no? I finished it. I oh, you don't okay. yeah, yeah, and it's just like that's when I had to let my cure you mm-hmm. beef go. You know, because I'm you know obviously I'm so t- <laughs> TV but I'm like no 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 no. I love this man. Like this, yeah. Yeah. what he's been through mm-hmm. is just and and his morality for wanting to do mm-hmm. what he's doing and i'm like he's a real I remember, one. bro yeah. he's a real one i remember that scene and i'm just like there was a scene um like maybe in chapter three where he's protecting someone you know that you know from i forgot the name of the clan that that was kind of housing him away mm-hmm. and did, like his own that guy's own team turned on him but Kiryu was protecting this guy because he felt a loyalty to him yeah and, Hanawa, yeah, yeah that's right Hanawa, yeah. yeah and yeah. he had to go, I'm like yo this game is crazy yeah like, yeah they, they uh-huh. were trying to kill him and, he, and he's like 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 they're not gonna kill him not on my watch you know he, he's, oh. he's, he's, he's with me you know that's crazy Facts. it's crazy yeah. so at that point that's why I say yeah so the fact that you said that that it had you know obviously God didn't have no, that moment because I definitely welled up towards that and God's like man mm-hmm. I, I felt that but mm-hmm. um, the, the way you the way you say it, infinite wealth raps mm-hmm. really gives me a lot of confidence. You know what I'm saying? Because there's mm-hmm. a lot going on, right? To try you to should have a lot of confidence in, in how they rap up Curious oh, Story. Oh, that's, that's what I want to hear. That's, that's what that I feels, that's like, good. I, I, that's as, good. As a fan of him since 2005, uh, when I hit that ending, I was like, damn. That's I didn't even yeah I didn't yeah great great okay. great job yeah I, yeah I I don't even want to say anymore yeah no doubt so that's no good doubt. to hear yeah uh we got one final question mm-hmm. this is from Matthew Miller hey boyos has game criticism become too or become numb to day one DLC according to Steam or according to its Steam page like a dragon infinite wealth has launched with nineteen pieces of DLC totaling a hundred and fifty eight dollars. And 81 cents. The game currently sits at a healthy 89 on Metacritic, and a few critiques reviews have done do not include any mention of egregious amount of DLC. Why is this not a subtractive consideration with re- when reviewing or scoring a review? So I can tell you from someone who did like professional reviews and Gene also, and I'm sure in COG too, sometimes they give you the version with everything, sometimes. And mm-hmm. also with the DLC, you kind of got to weigh what the DLC actually is. So I took a look at what a lot of this DLC was. The most annoying thing I saw was, of course, um, there's plus. two jobs. There's like a t- two oh, jobs, wow. I think, wow. that are tied to like a DLC kind of thing. Now, I don't know if this comes with the the best version of the game. I'm not exactly sure. But there's like a lot of stuff like boosting stats or levels. Like, I really don't care about that kind of stuff. and I think. It's just like a lot of games already do that stuff. I remember Tales of Asperia back on Xbox 360 had level boosts mm-hmm. you could buy and stuff like that. So that's pretty numb to me. I do think New Game Plus is annoying and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes some of the minor annoyances get greatly outweighed by the positives. And that's what mm-hmm. it seems like the case with this game is, in my opinion. Yeah, listen, you, li- li- yeah. Li- li- listen to all the content that I just listed out, yeah. right? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, like, it's like, like, like your reaction was that that sounds like a lot of content in this game. It's like exactly, you know, this, yeah. this game is so content rich. I didn't even notice that New Game Plus wasn't included. You know, yeah, exactly. It feels like um, you're getting like a huge, pretty much complete package already. So mm-hmm. you're like, new, no New Game Plus kind of sucks, but it's a bummer. It's, yeah, yeah, it still feels like everything you're getting. And people have been critical of it. I think that's totally yeah. fair. Yeah, but it's like even, even f- Yongye, the voice of Kiryu, uh, actually yeah. spoke out about it too. He didn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You didn't need to. And um, yeah, I think probably from what I've heard from you guys say, this is a very complete game worth the money amount of content they've thrown in and the quality mm-hmm. of it, most importantly. So I can see why it got really good reviews just by yeah. hearing what you guys said. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's always something to think about and how implemented how DLC is implemented is not always equal or the same for every game. So it's a case by case kind of basis. Some yeah. do it way better than others, and some are really bad at it. So mm-hmm. I guess that's just the case with this game. Mm-hmm. All righty. Cog, Yo. it's time. Your baby, it's here. <laughs> Tekken 8 is finally out. You've mm-hmm. been playing. I played a little bit of it, did a little mm-hmm. bit of the story mode. Uh, I'll share my impressions later, but t- Cog, man, Yo. please take it away. Man. 
I've been playing this series for over 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, Tekken is life for me. You know, um, again, one thing that separates Tekken that I always loved and fell in love with it was I always felt the motion capture and they really tried to capture a lot of martial arts, the essence of it. I think mean, mm. they have a real Taekwondo practitioner who plays by, um, who does the motion mocap for uh, my favorite character, which is Horang. Horang. Yeah, that's my guy. Like, I'm mm-hmm. Korean, stand up. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, like, so my thing coming into it was this, you know, I'm coming off of Seven and Seven saved the series because they really, um, Tekken Tag 2 almost tanked Harada and, and Namco with this game because it, just, it was just too complex. The systems were a little bit too much, way many, too many characters to learn and then implement in a tag system that just didn't work. Oh. Seven comes out, um, and you obviously the Akuma thing, the Street Fighter thing is canon. It's right. a big buzz. That kind of get the ball. But hardcore Tekken enthusiasts always felt, even though they introduced a lot of new things, that one of the main staples about Tekken is that every character would have a proper ending and a story. And, and, and the problem is I felt like the Akuma budget just really <laughs> locked it into just <laughs> Hayachi, Kazuya, and these guys. So that was the main problem. So we were like, yo, we got to go back to the essence of telling the story. So what they did in, in, in eight, which I think is phenomenal is that from a story perspective, they finally have like an Avenger style story where everyone is involved. And that to me really takes the series to the next level. Now I won't say, I will say Mortal Kombat is probably the best at this as far as like really implementing really good written stories. But what Tekken does, they take a page from it, but then they don't take themselves all the way seriously mm-hmm. and they no. anime the hell out of this thing. Like yeah. they, it's so anime tr- and I love it. it, it it's, it's, mm-hmm. It's done so well. The characters I want to shout out, um, the new character, Reyna, mm-hmm. highly Ooh. recommend. Gene, to Gene, Gene Park bait right there, man, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> she has a nice, I, 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 haven't, I haven't watched a rollout of Tekken 8 at all, but as soon as Reyna showed up in the story mode, I was like, ooh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, she she's an interesting character. Let's yeah. just say that. So you got that, and then um, again, everyone's in their factions. You know, some motivations for for, for certain people, things like that. But it's just cool to see because I've always wanted the Tekken universe to at least attempt it, and Harada and the team they they've done it. So I will say, you know, from the story standpoint. I've been loving the story, beat the story, play, you know, play that. I won't get into spoilers if we ever do that. You know, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I won't touch that now. But I think the main thing is the look of the game. I mean, this is Unreal Engine 5. This game looks phenomenal. Right. And I dare I say it, it is the best looking fighting game, period. And I love yeah. Mortal Kombat, love Street Fighter. You are not touching Tekken on graphical mm-hmm. fidelity. It's just mm-hmm. not close. The sound absolutely spectacular Tekken project. I mean, generally Tekken is always those up tempo and techno beats and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But like the thing about, they'll have some cheesy emotional style, like Rocky songs. And you're like, yo, what's it, it, it's some of them are cheap, but you're like, yo, it kind of fits and I'm feeling it. But I will say this historically Tekken has always had solid music. We usually about two to three standout tracks per game. This game, has about like nine to ten strong bangers. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like, damn, Namco, this go hard. Like, like some of the, the concluding fights. And then what I like is um you, you may have like a, a a track for a stage. And then if it gets to like round three, the the tempo of the track changes. It's literally almost like a different track that add, adds on to it. So that's a whole new level. Um, the, the the thing about the fighting now that I really like specifically at a gameplay standpoint is the heat system, because mm-hmm. you know again in the competitive scene, most people they're very defensive. That we call them turtles. They back up. They want to capitalize. They just want to see what you're going to do and wait for their opening. And also, there's this thing called Korean backdashing, which people, it's a whole movement thing. And people just back, back away and, and that kind of stuff. And it kind of devolves into this, and Harada has said it in the development of Eight, into like a boring thing to watch. So mm. what would happen now with heat, you activate the heat system. The minute your character is in heat, the defensive player, if they just stay there and block your attacks, they get chip damage. 
their chip damage starts to whittle, 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 whittle. So it encourages them to fight. Now, if they fight in fairness to the defensive character, if they start to fight and hit you back, even if they don't land, they start to get some of that recoverable energy back. Right. Hmm. So that's the push pull. When do you, you know, you get each person gets heat once per round. Right. So how you initiate it? Do you just initiate the heat starter, which is an armor move, or there's moves that lead you into heat naturally. Right. And then you have to learn. So what's cool about Tekken 8 is you literally have to relearn all the characters. You mm-hmm. can't come in there with, oh, I know Harang. I know Kazuya. No, no, no. The move sets have changed. Everything's changed. It's like learning brand new again. And um, I think the, the thing that I really want to highlight to me, and I know this is a controversial for some, but I'm going to stand on this one is I know AI is the big talk right now. And everyone's scared. Mm-hmm. And, and I get it. We're, you know, it's how it's utilized and we have to be careful in some aspects. But I do feel that it is good for gaming if used correctly. The way Tekken uses AI is next level. And what I mean by it is the Super Ghost battle system. So what will happen is, okay, let's say me and you, Brad, we're fighting and I'm, I'm tearing you up, right? Mm-hmm. So what happens is Tekken takes a replay of the fight. Mm. At the end of the fight, you can replay our match, right? So mm-hmm. I'm doing stuff with Haran, you're doing stuff with Kazooie. Mm-hmm. And then at key points during the replay, the game will stop and say, Brad, you could have, when Cog was doing this, you mm-hmm. could have punished him with these moves. And you can go into the replay and practice at mm-hmm. the moment it was happening during wow. your fight. You see that's what I'm saying? So, cool. yeah. so that's the first aspect, right? The mm-hmm. second aspect is, okay, me, you, and Gina all fighting together. Damn, Gene giving us a whole lot of problem with his Eddie Gordo, whoever can like, you know, he's tearing us up. Mm-hmm. You can download Gene's ghost and put it into your ghost system of fighters. So now you can practice just against Gene and his character, and it has all his tendencies, all his moves, literally one to one. So mm-hmm. if he likes to do back ass, he does this at this time, he grabs like literally the ghost system is mimicking his mm-hmm. style. One to one. It is mind blowing the way it's implemented. I think this is the next level of fighting game. This is really going to help improve people in terms of competitive fighters. And as far as the last thing I'll say for people who are like, yo, Cog, it's just a little too much. I don't, you know, I, it, fighting games are too much. You've got the arcade mode or card mm-hmm. back, back, arcade battle mode, which make, you make like a little Nintendo Wii version of yourself. And it teaches you the basics of tech and all the systems. It's really well done. This thing is like a whole story mode outside of story mode. And last thing would be the um, special style. And I, I call it dad mode. Hey, you don't want to learn all these combos. You don't mm-hmm. want to do all this stuff. Stuff is assigned to one button. It really helps a newbie. So I think they've got the best onboarding out of any fighting game, period. Yeah, um, I remember yeah. Uh, Street Fighter Six has that, like the modern yes. controls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to get people into fighting games who have been out of the loop or new to them. I think that's really cool. Man, this mm-hmm. ghost feature though you're telling about is insane. I had no idea mm-hmm. this was in the game. Mm-hmm. This is, so, I think, automatic or immediately to think about like you know the FGC and like pros or whatever how they're mm-hmm. gonna handle this like fighting each other like get collecting mm-hmm. some data essentially on yeah. your opponent before then. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. gonna be really interesting. Mm-hmm. Man, I fight worse. knee or high low. These guys, some of the mm-hmm. top Korean guys, the top bro. I can download <laughs> their ghost in tech and literally and fight and see how I fare. It's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. That's so crazy. Uh, Gene, how's it been for you so far? Yeah, I only just t- touch a little bit of story mode really, really early. Uh, but you know, that's really what I'm what I'm most interested in. Um, I've been a huge Mortal Kombat fan, uh, mostly because of the story mode. Uh, I just play the story mode and I just move on. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's what, what kind of what I'm planning to do with Tekken, but I definitely want, want to mess with, with you know, the, the custom characters and, and everything. And maybe a little bit of the online, but I hear the online uh, uh, netcode is, is a little wonky right now. But um, mm. oh my goodness. Yeah, I, Kong, I know exactly what you're saying, that this is, it, it reminds me of Mortal Kombat, but Mortal, if Mortal Kombat is the MCU, then Tekken is like Final Fantasy VII avid children or like, or, yes. or like, 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 <laughs> so you're so uh, accurate, because, bro. Okay. Because Mortal Kombat is so much like, like, like X rated violent, like MCU, right? But they got the, it's the same kind of humor and they got the same kind of music, uh, the same kind of vibes where like everyone, like, like good versus bad. Shang Tsung is back somehow, you know, and everything. <laughs> uh, but w- w- as soon as I played Tekken 8, I was like, holy shit, I feel like I'm playing like, like, juiced up 
Evangelion, you know, whatever. yes, <laughs> or, or, or 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 Dragon Ball, you know, but mm-hmm. but th- th- there's Lee uh, uh, managing a mi- military outfits for some reason, uh, and there's Nina the, with, with a bunch of the the the, the robots, uh, the, the robot fellas, uh, uh, but the seamlessness of of the of the cutscenes and the storytelling in between fighting. Here's yeah. the thing that, that I noticed about Tekken Eight storytelling. And the story mode is that it doesn't give a shit like what round you're on or whatever. <laughs> like, it, 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 the, you, you guys are just fighting, you know. And then when the fight's over, the fight's over, you know. Mortal Kombat in Mortal Kombat, there's always two rounds for some reason, which which always annoyed me. And then you get back up, and then they they, they tease each other, and you fight again or whatever. And in other story modes, you always have to do two rounds or one round or whatever like that. In Tekken Eight, you're just fighting. Like like sometimes a fight will just happen, you know. Yeah. And then and then. Tekken 8 is a true story mode in that sometimes you, you win the fight and then suddenly you're losing the fight and then because the cutscene is taken over but and then, and then but but the game is so nice with it and it's, it like it looks like that the the game actually like like countered me so it feels like I'm actually losing you know uh, even though I won and so it's so it's doing really really something interesting with story mode that, that I've, I've been i've been really wanted to see from story modes in fighting games for a long time which is why like, like this is what, which is why i tweeted like oh this story mode is like legit like this is it like i think this is the, i think this is the, the story mode of all time when it comes to fighting games you know? yeah um as someone who like hasn't really played tekken since two you know i hopped mm-hmm. into the story mode and i was very pleased to see they had like a nice little recap for all the previous games, I watched all of those. Just got a little context, which is very nice to have. Mm-hmm. Man, that story is insane. <laughs> <It's so laughs> I, love, I love how crazy it is. So ridiculous. So, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, like te- Tekken is basically like Resident Evil story. You know? Yes. <laughs> it's so true. Thrown in a volcano. In, in like, 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 like they, they keep trying to bring back the bad guy that that was cool in the beginning, and they accidentally kill Lov. So they, you know, like, like, oh shit, like Wesker was cool. So we gotta bring back Wesker. Oh shit, Heihachi was cool. So we gotta bring back Heihachi somehow. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's insane. But uh, going through the story has been really fun. I, I mean, this just the start of it is insane. You, you were right. It is Advent Children, Resident yeah. Evil Six esque kind of like insanity. Yeah, like just Jin and Kazuya fighting. That was awesome. <laughs> and like, I'm having to pick up all the controls again and like slowly learning back up. But I'm like, man, it's so fun, man. And Cog, you're yeah. right. It looks really good. It's so running good, good for me, man. Yeah. And yeah, dude, it's a good time to be a, t- a fighting game fan. Fighting right game fan, yeah. I, I think we're at the point, at least with Tekken, that Unreal Engine. I feel like the real time has kind of surpassed the pre-rendered cutscene. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like yeah. when they switch because it just seems a transition. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, man, the in-game graphics are so much better now. I remember that used to be always the opposite kind of thing. Right. But uh, yeah, it's interesting you said. But yeah, it is a phenomenal looking game for sure. And, and like Gene said, the transitions, what they're doing in the story, in the story mode, where you know they'll take control at certain points, mm-hmm. you know, add additional flair to it in the round. A go QTE, back. a QTE, QTE, right in the middle yeah. of fight. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just playing an action game all of a sudden now. You know, yeah. it's crazy. It's dope. It, it's really cool what what they attempt to do. And as you get further. There's some other things that they they implement into it, you know. What I'm saying mm, for, I can't for, wait, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can already yeah. tell that they're gonna go crazy with it, man. So I'm like, fuck, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's yeah crazy. I, I am addicted to infinite wealth, especially with the the, the fucking Animal Crossing Island mode. But mm-hmm. as soon as I get done with that shit, I'm going back to Tekken and because because yeah. I can't yeah. wait. I, I think I, I might actually train on Tekken. You know, I, I think I might. Uh, I think I, I want to learn the old ten strings again. You know, let's mm-hmm. go, let's go. Uh. I was really happy to see too. They added the goofy modes like Tekken Ball. Like I'm yeah. really happy they kept stuff like that in the game. It's yeah. so I'm, I love fighting games that keep stuff like that in there. Mm-hmm. I think it's a mm-hmm. it's a great mix up. Mm-hmm. Uh, JP wrote in though. Hey hey, this question is for Cog since I know he's a Tekken fiend. But anyone else is free to chime in. First, who's your main? Two, mm. how important is story in a fighting game to you? I asked because I said to a friend, I didn't really care about Tekken's story at all. I enjoyed them if they're good, but uh, then not think about them at all till the next one comes out. Mm. Would love to hear your thoughts about this one. Yeah. So first of all, Cog, main. Let's hear it. Wadang. Yeah, I'm Taekwondo, baby. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I took Taekwondo and Muay Thai for a little bit, so resonates with that. And I come from the old... Uh, 
70s, what is it, martial arts flicks. So I used to watch all the Taekwondo practitioners. So this guy, Harang, his motion cap is literally authentic Taekwondo with some anime spice on it <laughs> kind of, of thing. But he's, yeah, he's Jin's rival in the story. He's kind of a prick, you know. He's like, I'm better, <laughs> I'm better than you. I want to I wanna bring the devil Jin out of you so you can <laughs> fight at your highest level so I can test my kung fu kind of energy. He's that kind of guy. But, you know, yeah. he's like the anti here, but he's not really evil. Mm-hmm. He has a good side. He saved Jim before, so that's his. That, that, that's my, my my guy. As far as all, he's not the villain. He's just the antagonist. Yeah, he's just the antagonist. He's yeah, been yeah, there yeah, since yeah. Tekken Three, and I, I remember when I saw him, I was like, "Yeah, this is my guy." Now, as far as story in the fighting, yeah, it, it's it's important to me. You know, um, mm-hmm. I think that just like I was talking about how I fell in love with Harry, it's like if you one thing that Tekken does, and they've been doing this since Tekken One is every character has an ending, right? And even the sub-bosses and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it adds that little personality, adds that little connection. Okay, what is the motivations? Why is Lee Chao Leg so evil towards Hayachi? Because, like, you know, you, you want to find out these little sub-stories. Anna and Nina, the sisters, why do they hate each other? And stuff like that. And, of course, Tekken gets ridiculous. But with this one, I think that it's really important. Again, remember I told you, the difference from 7 and 8, the Tekken community was very upset at Tekken 7 with only with not fleshing out the rest of the characters. Tekken 8 solves this. So even if you felt you do the story mode and you're like, man, I don't feel my character really had a moment or didn't get enough shine. They have character episodes for every character you could still do. Some of them unlock, special ones unlock after you do the story mode. So oh. I would, yeah. So I would highly say do story mode first, knock that out. Then go to character episodes for extra context. Now, some of them are non-canon and it's telling it, it's it's fictional in that character's head, but some of them are, and it, mm-hmm. it, it, it adds a, additional content. And it just makes you fall in love with, with certain characters. And I like the new um, oh man, the new character name is Victor, and um, he's like this French, like almost like a John Wick CBC kind. Oh, of. that guy, yeah. Whoa. He and he's voiced by like this famous voice I mean, um actor. I think it's Vincent something French. Absolutely amazing, and the story is hilarious. He 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 he's funny. He's funny. So yeah, I would highly recommend that. And I think Tekken does a good job with uh, story and characters. Cool, Gene. What's your main? Uh, gosh, I don't. So so I haven't played Tekken since Tekken Four. Um, I was telling Cod that, that, that I dipped out of Tekken Five and Tekken Six, and he was telling me that a lot of people dipped out around Tekken Five. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. sounds about right. Um, I remember I was a huge fan of Lee, as I mentioned. Uh, Ooh, also, uh, Jin Kazama, Jin's yes. mom. Uh, yes. she, she was very like like counter heavy. Um, I, I'm, I was I was such a huge fan of, of counter heavy games uh, or or just or characters and stuff. And plus, I like playing uh, girls in fighting games too. Um, so I don't know who my main is uh, in Tekken Eight yet. Um, but uh, when it comes to story mode. Uh, story mode obviously is really important to me. Uh, I'm playing Tekken 8 for the mm-hmm. story and I play Mortal Kombat for the story. Um, I think story mode might actually be really important for fighting games in general because when yes. you look, because you look at the, look at the two biggest, uh, uh, best sell- look at the three best selling fighting game franchises. It's Mortal Kombat, it's Tekken, and it's Smash Brothers, right? Uh, all three games ha- either have a very, very robust story mode or they have interesting characters. Uh, Smash has... Pretty pretty much has a story mode, but also like each of those characters have their own story of why they're there in a Smash tournament, or they, mm-hmm. might, you know, they have their own backstories that you can feed into the Smash game itself, right? And then you look at game, uh, look look at a game like Multiverses, you know, uh, that was fun. It also has iconic characters as well, but had no story, you know, that, that, that there was no reason why Batman was was out there finding Game of Thrones characters or whatever, you know, there was no real context <laughs> for that. Uh, Street Fighter famously struggled with, without any kind of story mode. Street Fighter Five just came out with with nothing. It, right? Could even came out with an arcade mode, you know, um, which is crazy. So I think I think uh, story mode is super important. I think I think the success of these games really shows that 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 if you want to be in the consciousness of of people's minds, you should have good characters and good stories and good reasons yeah. why these characters are here to fight. Um, otherwise, uh, you're, you're probably just going to be just shit out of luck, you know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that's how you get a lot of new people into. Yeah, they want to know these stories. They want to get to know these characters. Like, if you can find a can- character you can attach yourself to or you exactly. really like, it's important to mm-hmm. keep you going, fighting. You know, people got their characters they had from like back in the day because they love those characters. Like, exactly. That'll help you find those. 
Exactly. So sometimes you might want to play a fighting game because that character is there, because you like yeah. that yeah. character, because you yeah. like their story. You know, l- l- yes. look at the success of Overwatch and and yeah. and, and the hero shooter. You know, yeah. Uh, totally. Team Fortress did, didn't oh have my God, that much story, right? But, it, but it, I loved those cinematics, Gene. But the yeah, TF2 but the cinematics ones. were wonderful, right? And, yeah, then, and so Overwatch good. took it to the next level, and it was like, look, like, look at this cute Korean girl, or whatever. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a whole fandom and community around it, you know. So yeah. that's what that's what fighting games need now, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if Killer Instinct's gonna come out, Killer Instinct better have a good story mode. Oh, you know? better. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I better find out what Full Gore is doing now in 2025 <laughs> or whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, for mains, for me, so back in Tekken two, I think his how you pronounce it is Lei Wulong. Oh, Lei Wulong. Let me know. He was Jackie my favorite Shen character. Yes. Yeah, he was my favorite at the time, but he's not in this one, sadly. Mm. So I have I, I'm at a crossroads right now. Mm. It's either um, Yoshimitsu, okay, okay, Yoshi, one of the OGs, and I love yeah. him in Soul Calibur. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kuma, I just Ooh. love Kuma. Always Hilarious. loved Kuma. Yeah, Kuma's hilarious. Uh, and one I never really knew about, but I just messed around with him a little bit in the story. And I was like, yo, this guy's clicking with me is oh. Sergey. I was like, OK, Ooh. so we're dragging off this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Dragging off. So I was like, this guy's new to me. I don't know him, but I was I was liking his kit. So I don't Ooh. know, man. I haven't I haven't latched onto mine yet. I got to kind of experiment and find everybody. But everyone's looking real fun so yeah. far. So, yeah, and we it, dig into more of that. It's like you said, sometimes it, a character just clicks with you for some reason, whether yeah. it's just the way the control sets, the move set is, and things kind of come off you, and then you're able to put things together in a small thing. So mm-hmm. then you just go through that move list, and I, I highly recommend to hit that arcade mode because yeah. it, it'll really teach you some 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 things and, and basics with each character as well. Yeah, I need to hit that mode up, mm-hmm. get my fundamentals back and all that. Yes. Uh, Grant wrote in, Hey guys, I heard Cog talk a lot about Tekken. I'm just curious what makes Tekken his fighting game of choice. Also, any tips for people looking to get into fighting games? Yeah, so um, fight, the reason why I Tekken, like I said, uh, as a person who loves martial arts, I thought it was the closest representation. So you got that. And as far as the control system, I love how they do, you know, right punch, left punch. It, each represents Each button represents a limb. You know, mm-hmm. left kick, right kick. So I think that what was the second part of this question? I forgot. <laughs> the first one was just well. Uh, any like, f- any tips to getting into fighting games? Tips for fighting games. Look, um, I think you got to be patient. That's the main thing. Patience yes. is key because if you you know you're gonna get frustrated, there's gonna be some things that don't come to you initially, right? So what I would highly recommend is first go into the practice mode. Go through this, the move list, so you can see what the character is capable of. And what I would highly recommend is. There's a mode to look at the move list and it shows you cinematic, the character doing it. But then I believe it's a button combination like press start and triangle or whatever, where now you're in real time. The move list is above you and then you can try to implement it and then you can switch. So this way you're seeing move lists, you're seeing motions and button combinations and things of that nature. And where Tekken really does a good job is they even have a second in the move list section. There's another tab to tell you situational times you be should be using moves someone you're mm-hmm. blocks a lot do this if someone blocks low punish him with this so they're really taking the extra steps and, and like i said um the the arcade mode highly recommend you know yeah. really really get it so those, those would be the three things it's really good for onboarding i i think this is the best they've ever done with really onboarding new people into fighting games what about eugene any tips for getting into fighting games uh oh gosh <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, check out Street Fighter Six and Tekken Eight. Yeah, check out these modern control styles. Yes, um, I get that it's very intimidating. Uh, uh, fight, uh, I used to be huge into fighting games. Uh, Virtual Fighter was my favorite uh, 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 series, so that that's how hardcore I was. And uh, and Akira was my favorite character. So that's how that's how oh, hard no. that's how hard I went Whoa. because Complex because. Character. He, yeah, he's a he's a very very complex character. Again, I love parries and, and encounters, right? So I really really committed to to doing his his uh, you know judo encounters and everything. But uh, that but it takes a it takes a lot to to, to stay up on that. It, it, it's like an esport, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I stopped training in Virtual Fighter, and then when I picked it back up again, I was garbage. I was like, I can't pl- play this anymore. And then I I was like, I can't keep up 
uh, training like this. But fortunately, I think the the, the fighting game uh, developers have have realized that, and they've been they've been doing a lot to to to, to get me back, to win me back. You know, so mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat series, Tekken, Street Fighter Six. Uh, I I I think the, the I think a lot of these developers are doing a lot to make sure that folks like us who have been lapsed or people who are interested in fighting games are getting into it. Just, just hear out the, the ones that have accessibility options. They're, they're, they're there for you. And then they're, they're there for you to build up too. you know, mm-hmm. the, 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 so you can have a foundation and then you can actually start playing these games and then you can build up to have, to, to having more skill, you know? Mm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I guess I would say um, just be willing to learn. It's a huge part of it. Like, and don't mm-hmm. like you got to be cool with losing. You know, you're going to lose, but you got to remember every time you lose, you're going to learn a little more. and You're going to grow from it. And that's what a lot of it kind of is. Like, just find a character you feel comfortable with for right away or take a little time to find someone that you're attached to. Then really start to build up from there. You're going to slowly. It's like learning an instrument or something. You know, you're going to yes. start slow. You're going to start with very basic notes and everything like that. But then you're just going to start building up lower and lower and lower. And there's also a lot of people in the same boat as you. So don't feel bad. Mm-hmm. Don't feel like you suck or anything like that. Everyone, there's all types of skill levels out there. And there's people for you to fight against. And you're just trying to have fun at the end of the day. But if you have those mindsets in mind, of like just being okay with losing, just getting better, you're going to have a really good time. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. All right. Another good question advice. from AJ White. Hey, SS. No, you save that for the other show. You can call them SS, <laughs> not us. <laughs> I recently downloaded Tekken 2 on the PS5 and had a blast mm. playing it with my wife. I have great memories of playing it with my dad way back in the day when I was a kid. As someone who hasn't played a Tekken game since, uh, what is th- what is there a gain- What is there to gain from playing new ones besides graphical fidelity? I thank you for your opinion. So... Aside from graphics, Cog, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tekken's evolved a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, a yeah. Lot. Fighting games always evolve a lot. What would you say to someone who's only played really Tekken 2, though? Whew. The differences now. Because oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot, so there's, there's it could be hard to say, but yeah. let's just try to boil it down. I would say some of the biggest additions for a guy like that who hasn't played in a while would be the rage system and the rage arts. So basically the problem with older Tekkens is if you're getting dominated, Mm -hmm. that's kind of it. That's it. But now what happens is when you get to that maybe last one fourth of your life, your energy meter starts to pulsate. All your moves do a little bit extra damage. It's almost like a comeback mechanic in a way to incentivize you to not give up. But what's cool is when you get into that state once per round, you can then you can use your rage art. And he, this is basically a cinematic, super powerful attack that if you land it, oh, you feel fantastic. So right. your character goes into full cinema and you can sometimes interrupt someone. And if you catch them, Tremendous damage. So that's what I would say. Um, so rage, the rage art system. Remember, this is separate from heat. Heat is a whole different thing, right? Right. Heat's He's, like the meter, isn't it? Right. He, okay. Heat's the meter that everyone has underneath your health bar once per round. You could use it, but rage is actually implemented in the health bar, and you'll see it. It'll well, as soon as you like you're close to death, you'll see that thing pulsate, and that's a mechanic. Because what happens is. Sometimes it catches me. Like, I'm beating somebody. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, I forgot. They, they still got a rage art. B, don't get too crazy. If you leave yourself wide open, you mm-hmm. get caught with that thing. That gives the other person tremendous momentum to come back. So, mm-hmm. yeah, th- those are the things that I think lo- a lot of people who are new to the series, uh, you know, are going to really enjoy because it, it, it incentivizes comebacks. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think those are two huge changes from the old Tekken games, especially two and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Fighting games have changed quite a bit. So I think mm-hmm. if you played, if you enjoyed two and you hopped in eight, I think you'd have a really good time. Yeah, no doubt. All right, boys. Uh, any final thoughts on tech before we move on to the next game? Anything? Just, no, I was going to say, man, it, I'm really proud of Harada and the team, man. It, mm-hmm. The series has come a long way. You know, I, I f- really feel they nailed it. And I feel like, look, I got to let the dust settle because I know right. I'm, I'm a prisoner of the moment right now. You know right. But the way this is shaping up, it could be the greatest Tekken game of all time. That's, that's great to hear. That's how strongly I feel about this entry. And if I had to, prior to Tekken 8, I would probably rank 
Tekken three and five is probably the best. Um, but eight's there, man. Eight's mm-hmm. eight's there. Like, and I, I think they've taken it to the next level. So yeah, give it a shot. Story is absolutely <laughs> nuts. Was, Some was things go down. Was Tekken seven this cinematic in terms of the fights? Um, Tekken yes. Eight is super cinematic. I, like I love it. So I was like, yeah. like, like, have I been missing out? Has the series always been like this or what? No, no. Seven started to implement a little bit, bit but nothing like but, this. But nothing yeah. like this. This is yeah. crazy, right? This, this, this is, is like crazy. next level. This is yeah. This, this is, is the, the next. next level. Okay, Tekken Eight yeah, is where yeah. it's at. Okay, Tekken Eight is where it's at. Oh, man. Oh, so, yeah. oh, also, I vaguely remember, but wasn't a Jin like like a warlord uh, in Tekken Six? Like, oh, he was a criminal. Like, like he was wasn't criminal. he like bombing the world world in Tekken Six? Yeah, he went. Why trench. is he the, the 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 hero of the earth? It, 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 they literally fucking call him the hero of the earth in Tekken Eight. <laughs> yeah, basically he's trying he to atone or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to atone for his sins. In, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Devil yeah. Like, like, like we're, we're we're good with him, dude. You know, despite yeah. despite uh, despite all everything he's done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's hilarious. It's absolutely that. That's the techiness of it. They do explain it, but it, we and you in real situation, like bro, you was a war criminal. And like, man, bro, what's like in six, bro? Like, what are we doing? Like, why, why, is he, why, why is he a drippy like hero all of a sudden? Yeah. Like, because he calls over like, bro, you were totally a war criminal last game. Like, what are you talking yeah, that, about? That's like, why I'm like, man, this fucking Resident Evil last story, dude. Like, like, I love this shit. <laughs> it's great. It's so great. And I will say. Oh, so some great callbacks for people who follow the story mm-hmm. in older tech is they've got some really subtle cues, mm. music, characters, motivations that you go, oh, wait, I remember okay. this. And how they handle the whole devil gene saga, the Mishima bloodline saga is really dope. Like yeah, cool. yeah, they yeah. go, they, they do some some special things that I, I didn't think they would yeah. do. I'm excited to to hear. I actually watched the Brian Cox uh, story wrap up. I, I I didn't watch it like when it was released, but before I, I started Tekken Eight, I was like, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I can see how useful this is, and it was pretty useful. So mm-hmm. it caught me up. Okay, <laughs> man, yeah. Uh, Bandai doing good fighting games. I hope uh, I hope we get a new Soul Calibur from them. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness! I, I was actually Soul thinking Calibre. that I was I was playing. It. I was like, man, I miss Soul Calibur so much. So yeah, hopefully mm-hmm. that'll be next or something. Because yeah. fighting games, in my opinion, are thriving, and they, <laughs> they're in one of the best spots they've been in a very long time. Hopefully, mm-hmm. Ki can get a, another chance to. Would love to see that. Come on, Phil, mm-hmm. let's, let's get that go. out there, buddy. Yeah, here in Rumblings, stay tuned. Yeah. Primal Rage too. While we're at Ooh, Primal yeah. Rage, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. dude. Let's fucking get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, get get that Godzilla. You know, Godzilla is huge right now. Right? Get that yeah, Godzilla cross marketing right now. You know, that's true, yeah. dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. All right, boys, let's talk about Crisis Core goofy title. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. That's the whole title. This is the prequel to Final Fantasy VII. First mm. off, let's talk about if you guys have history with Final Fantasy VII. Gene, I know you do to extent. Cog, what about you, though? Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII. What's funny is, like, I'm not the biggest Final Fantasy guy, but Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that, man, that changed the game. I, I remember, Gene, you took me back, I think, last time we were talking, and you, you mentioned... um. Or, or no, actually not you. Excuse me. I was speaking to Harold Goldberg from New York uh, Video Games Critic Circle, mm. and he was telling me he had the opportunity back then. They flew him out to Hawaii, the developers of Final Fantasy VII for PlayStation, to cover the game. And he was talking about like he, he kind of went on a whim, like yeah, I'll get to it if I get to it. Got energy, and I remember he's seeing it. And he's like, yo, this like this game's phenomenal. Like it was such an inflection point at its time. It really added that cinematic storytelling and you know the story of cloud and you know obviously what's going on with sephiroth and all these uh, fun characters but yeah i remember having that for playstation it was like three discs or something like that. it was mm-hmm. phenomenal I, I fell in love with this game i think it had the pre-rendered backgrounds and the thing for me was always the material system and the summits like yeah. i just went crazy <laughs> Leviathan, i'm like yo what is going on these things would take forever but yeah so i i have a a, a, a history with seven. Um, I, I, I'm assuming you're playing a uh, crisis core. Cause I just played it for the first time. Like I didn't mm-hmm. even, I didn't have, what was it on PSP? I didn't, I didn't know where yeah, it, was it was on PSP before. originally. Yeah. Yeah. So I played it for the first time really. And 
I, I thought it was really cool just to kind of learn about this character, right? This, mm-hmm. this Zach. I didn't know anything about Zach Fair outside of some references, you know, in uh, Final Fantasy VII. So, yeah, th- that, that's my history with it. I've played um, all the new remakes and rebirths. Okay, so, so you're ready, up. yeah. I'm ready, you know, and um, I'll be ready for it uh, next month. That's why I got to get these two games knocked out because <laughs> that's my <laughs> next big one, you know, when, re- when the world stops when Final Fantasy VII drops mm-hmm. anything for me True. so that's where i'm at with it yeah gene obviously you played the ps1 back in the day the original yep. uh yeah, yeah, Crisis I in japanese yeah, reminder, yeah. So. yeah 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 you played it real early did you play yeah. crisis core gene uh, I did not play Crisis Core on P- PSP. I did play Crisis Core when it was released. Uh, okay, so you recently, so. Really, okay, cool. But I finally got that got got that away. I did play Excellent. it a little bit, but I, I definitely didn't like finish it or anything like that. And I yeah. watched the cutscenes because I figured I was never going to play Crisis Core. So thank goodness they actually re released it. It was nice. a fun game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's pretty solid. Like, it's very much still a PSP game. Mm-hmm. Like at its heart, like you could see the bones of it. Like they updated it in like a lot of amazing ways. Like character models look super good. Like Zach's model, particularly, like he, you're like pretty much rebirth assets at that point or remake assets at that point. Uh, but then you see like the characters like turn though, and then it's like, oh yeah, this is a PSP game. And you see how small some of the areas are and all that good stuff. But um, I do think it's a really cool side story to get to know Zach. But hold on. I had a lot of people ask about this. Like so many people over time with Rebirth getting close, dude, Mm -hmm. people want to know what to play before Mm -hmm. Rebirth. What all that stuff. I'm going to say this. We'll get to it more later with a question, but this game is enhanced way, way, way more. If you've played the original Final Fantasy seven, in my opinion, the re- release order is the order you should play them in as they intended as the developers. But we'll get into all that more later, all that kind of stuff. But replaying this, it is really cool to s- just see like the origins of Zack, this character who is like in seven, the original, but like kind of side stuff. I think you can skip a lot of that anyways, but um, just getting to know that, getting to see, cloud when he's younger and all that kind of stuff and getting to learn about the buster sword and how it eventually becomes Cloud's signature weapon i think is super cool there's some goofy story stuff that like of course Final seven is goofy i think it's very serious but there's also a lot of goofy stuff that <laughs> characters like genesis who aren't really my favorite who are just kind of like uh like theater geeks like, yeah, like nothing the wrong with the bro. Right? Yeah, nothing like <laughs> nothing wrong with being in the theater and all that stuff. But imagine being around you someone like who's literally quoting like Shakespeare plays at you constantly, and you're just like, dude, stop. That okay. is Genesis the character. Yes. But um, I think the combat's pretty fun. It's real time, unlike the original. But there's also this really funny thing called the DMW, which is like a slot machine essentially that's rolling the whole time you're playing you don't control it you have like no real input about it but certain things would land like if you get all three of like a character you can get like a limit break for them or if you get sevens you get levels up or in like stuff kind of it's very random but still kind of fun and goofy at the same time kind of works but it is such a weird idea that they even went with a slot machine mechanic for combat but i'm like okay whatever it's totally fine but it's really cool getting to see a lot of the areas from the original game in more of a 3D kind of design space. Getting explored. They're very small, obviously, because it's a PSP game. So, you know, everything's pretty limited and lots of screens in between. But it's been really cool to go through all that. Uh, obviously, material system is back, which is fun. You get to mix material and all that kind of stuff. And they level up, which is really good. And um, combining items and crafting stuff like that. There's also a lot of little side missions you could take on to get uh, worthwhile rewards like materia and stuff like that that are very designed around the time of this is a handheld machine. Some of them are like 30 seconds or, yeah. and like very short. So they are definitely designed for, hey, you're on the train for you got a couple minutes, something like that here. Knock out a couple missions with well, it. Totally makes sense for PSP back in the day. But as a console thing at home, mostly it's a little jarring, but they're, they're fine. It's no big deal. But overall, I think it's a if you're if you're playing Rebirth or you're getting ready for Rebirth, you should play this game because it seems like they expect you to know a little bit about some of that stuff, where we're going. 
but we'll get more into that. But yeah, Reaper, uh, Crisis Core Reunion is a good, Crisis Core was a good game, I think, just like a good game, but this elevates it to a better, uh, more modern standard to make it a little more enjoyable for everyone nowadays. Because that game was stranded on PSP for too long, so yeah. I'm happy they finally got it out of jail. and gave it a nice remaster, man. Yeah, let's go to paint. But first, I got to answer this email. All right, let's go. What we got? This is from the late Nate. Hey, reference to the Soul series that I missed, talking about the name. I'm currently playing Crisis Core Reunion for the first time after playing and finishing the OG Final Fantasy VII for the first time. I found almost the entirety of FF7 to be a drag. I have no nostalgia for it and such a f- and, and as such found it increasingly or incredibly dated. All the praising holding it up as one of the goats only made it worse as I felt I was missing something. Music was awesome though. Crisis Core Reunion on the other hand, which I wanted to get before starting remake, I'm having a blast with from the get-go. I honestly wish I had skipped FF7 or watched a story recap and just gone straight into Crisis Core. That's what I advised my friend to do in a similar situation with no FF7 nostalgia, and he's enjoying Crisis Core as well. That's it. I just want to suggest Crisis Core Reunion as a starting point for those with no nostalgia for FF7, especially as early 3D games don't hold up now, and it is no exception. Probably doesn't help that the last JRPG I played before this was Persona 5 Royal. Mm. All right, hold on. We got we to gotta address this right now, Nate. Let's all right, go. first of all, I'm, I'm issuing the stand down right now. You've gone too far in this email. <laughs> You've gone too far. First of all, if you don't like the original FF7, that's totally fine. No problem like that. But you are just, you are saying essentially here people praise it for nostalgia and that doesn't hold up. That's not true. I've heard from several people recently and in the past who've gone through seven the first time and they loved it and says it holds up. And I think you're doing dirty service by saying to play crisis core before seven. No, you need to play seven. You're ruining a big part of final fantasy seven. If you do that, you're ruining a lot of the mystery. Don't do that. Play the original if you can. Now, if you're never going to play the original for some so for some reason, fine. But please do not do not do this man's advice, listeners. The late Nate, don't do not take his advice. Do not play Reunion if you are going or yeah, if you, don't play Chris Core Reunion if you have any intention of playing FF7. Mm. FF7 is still an amazing game. Yeah, play Final Fantasy XVI instead or something. Yeah, sake, it sounds know? like you like action games more. Yeah, it sounds like you want like action games. You should play Final yeah. Fantasy XVI. You should play Devil May Cry Five. Yeah, Try High Five Rush. You know? It's it's a turn based RPG, yes, and it is an old game, but it has an amazing deep battle system yeah. that gives you a ton of flexibility that I highly recommend. Story's great, characters are great. Please play the OG first if you're going to, if you're considering it. Yeah. So yes. Uh. We'll keep going because I have more. Okay. Because people people wrote in a lot about Final Ooh. Fantasy. Because everyone rebirths on the horizon. Everyone know, wants to know what's going on. This is from OTAPS. My summon slappers with Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII, Reunion popping up on this episode. I thought it would be a good time to ask about, as Rebirth is fast approaching, ask about this. What would be the ideal prep for Rebirth? I assume Final Fantasy VII Remake is a lock, but what about the original? Crisis Core? Is that essential? Given that Avent Children has returned to theaters in Japan and is also going to be available in the US too, are Square Enix subtly hinting that this might provide some important context? Anything else from the compilation of Final Fantasy VII that you feel might be important? Dirge Cerberus, anyone? Okay. A lot of information here. A lot of lots going on, dude. Uh, the part about Avent Children uh, was Square hinting at someone. I would say yes. Mm-hmm. I would say yes. So no spoilers, but I'm going to tell you the order I would recommend is let's go, let's the go. original. Start with yes. the original. If you have time for everything. OK, if you have time for everything, the original. Then you can do Crisis Core. Then. I would say watch Avon Children. <laughs> if you got mm-hmm. time, you can play Dirge Service. Dirge Service kind of sucks though. Mm-hmm. So, but I wish, it would, I wish it would remake it into a good game because yeah, me too. 
because it kind of sucks, but the, but then but then you can feel the goodness in it, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's disappointing. It's hard yeah. to recommend anyone unless they are an extremely diehard fan who like yeah. has to know all the story. Yeah. Because there's some stuff in there that shows up in some games, so maybe. But that's the bottom of the list, I would say, for now. So that's the order I'm going to pitch to you. Uh, in terms of Ever Crisis, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't played Ever Crisis yet, but I know they have some of the first soldier mobile game stuff in there, like story wise. So I'll have to check that out and report back to you because yeah. at this point, anything could happen in Rebirth. I have no idea. Anything yeah. could show up. So they could we show don't up, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Georgia service could show up because they, they reference a uh, deep ground in, in, yep. uh, in, 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 in the YouTube Yeah, there chapter. are some, Ooh, yeah, there no are some servers characters in there. Yeah. So, yeah. But I was like, God time. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no spoilers here, but if you've played the original seven, mm. everything will just hit harder for you. Yes. Even in remake. And yep. I'm sure it's going to be the same case in rebirth. So just mm-hmm. keep that in mind. Completely they know agree. they know people who are playing remake for the first time they exist. The developers know this. They know not everyone's played the OG, so they will accommodate to you. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, if you want the max out of the experience, the Final Fantasy VII experience, play the original also. Completely agree. I think it's a must. And I, I like your order, Brad, because I, I think, yeah, yeah the order, original, that's a perfect order. That's it. Perfect order. Then yeah. Crisis Core, whatever. Because, yeah, the original is really going to give you so much extra weight when it, mm-hmm. when you finally get to what they're doing. <laughs> and I'll yeah. just leave it at that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Rock has wrote in. What's up, Summoning Sign Gang? I'm so hyped to hear you talking about Crisis Core. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but it's probably my favorite game in the compilation FF7. Hmm. I just finished a replay in anticipation for Rebirth, so it's fresh on my mind. I feel like conversations over Crisis Core end up in the same boring negatives about Angeal, Genesis, and other new characters being bad. Hmm. But I think the battle system is great. The DMW is a cool way to keep battles going with fun random elements. The uh, limit breaks slash summon animations are really well done. And Zach is a very lovable protagonist you really want to root for. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game. Thanks, Rakez. Uh, Yeah, I think seven or uh, Christ Core is a fun game. I think mm-hmm. the combat, like you said, is fun. I don't think this game's amazing or I would say even great, but I think it's good and it's fun. And there's some there's some good stuff here every now and then. But I mean, the reason Angeal in Genesis are brought up. I don't I don't have anything against Angeal whatsoever, by the way. I think he's fine. The reason Genesis gets brought up because the story is so important to Final Fantasy seven, like so important. And when mm-hmm. you start throwing in kind of random elements out of nowhere, it seems like. Mm-hmm. And when you when you're putting Angeal next to Sephiroth and like Cloud. It, you got hard, you got tall competition you're up against, so. Yeah, the the issue is that they're trying to make another character as important as Cloud or Zack or Sephiroth. And yeah, and it's, like, it's like he's not it's there not, yet. It's not, it's not gonna work. It's, he's it's not like there trying yet. to. It, it's like trying to make Thanos too when Thanos is still there. You know, <laughs> exactly. Like, as a good and, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. Good. like Thanos is still alive, bro. Like, so like, Sephiroth, Sef- we, we still got Sephiroth right here, man. Right yeah. here, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. That's the so, perfect so, analogy. I mean, that's what the whole story was. Is, is that, that they were like, like, like it was just more clones, and it's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. I totally yeah. agree. And but like, who knows what the future will bring in terms of that? Like, maybe I, I wouldn't be surprised if Genesis showed up somehow. Yeah, future games they can make him way cooler or something maybe down the line I have no idea that's what I'm hoping for I hope he's even better in the yeah. future but we'll see I guess where things go yeah alright boys it is time for sort it out this segment if you don't know listeners viewers segment where we talk about someone in the game industry who's fucking up Who's blowing it right now? Company, person, game, perhaps? Someone that needs sorting. I can go first if you guys need time to think. Mm-hmm. But if your boys are ready, feel free to jump in. I set it off. I want to see where you go with it. Yeah. Right? All right. Yeah. So there is obviously the big elephant about Laos. 
But yeah. we're going to get into that later, specifically on Duke down the line. Yes. So we'll save it for then. But I just saw a new one today that I was like, Oh, oh boy. No. <laughs> so right. what's going on? What's going Suicide on Squad early mm. access just launched today. Uh, guess what? The servers were down because when people booted up the game, the game somehow became auto completed. Like they beat the whole game. So this was also to... it out too. <laughs> OK, beautiful. Yeah. They had to take down the game for people that spent about $100, I believe. Bro, Servers dude. go down, I understand, but dude, <laughs> the reason, like, the game being complete when you boot it up, like, the, a clear save file is insanity to me. How does this even happen? How do you, how do, you do that? Yeah. How do you do that? That's crazy. How do, how do you wow. beat the game for people that bought it early? Yeah. It's insane. And like, it's like, 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 like we sound crazy saying that, right? Like, yeah. How, how? And especially. I'm speechless. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's worries. just this game has had an uphill battle too for such a long time. So yeah. they can't take any more hits, man. They're struggling as it is. I'm sure it'll sell like probably fine or whatever, but uh, not good optics for, for this game quite right for right now. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for me, sorting out is different. Um, I'm gonna, I rarely do this, but I'm gonna come out of a, a studio out of oh, love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> out of love. Um, absolutely. A dead last come to the front of the congregation, man. I just need to know what the hell y'all doing. I, where <laughs> is my state of the game three? <laughs> like, what's going <laughs> on? I feel like out of all of Xbox Game Studios, I hear the least about them. Like, I don't mm. know. I don't feel like you know they're. Obviously, working on they're still working on two. They still have content for two, but I feel like since we had that, what is it like a Unreal style trailer, you know that we know clearly is not going to be representative of the game. But it's just like they've been literally in the dark. And I, I, I as a person who played the original State of Decay as a Xbox arcade game, and I loved it. It had permadeath. It was like my little um, mock version of The Walking Dead that I can, you know, make my character see who lives, who survives, that kind of thing. And I loved it. And it was a charming game. You know, 2 came out. It definitely came out before the um, acquisition of, um, what you call it, um, Undead Labs with, with mm-hmm. Xbox. But I, I think this game has so much potential. And I'm just curious to see what they're doing at the last. What's the latest update? Are they working on other projects? Is it just that? So that's right. where I'm at. So I did last sort it out, man. And then they've been through so much shakeup. Like yeah. uh, Jeff Strain left and a lot of uh, management left. They, they, there was a big turnover. I would just love a, an update on what's happening in that building. Yeah. Yeah. Cog, I'd love an update on a lot of first party developers around the world. Yes. <laughs> Where's. Metroid Prime 4, what's happening? Mm, what are you doing, so Sucker Punch? What what's going doing? on here? What's happening? Uh, Gene, mm. anything else, or we should we should just stick with Suicide Squad? Yeah, so, yeah I got nothing else, but yeah, yeah. I, I just couldn't believe what was happening with Suicide Squad. I, I, I can't imagine being a consumer who, have, who bought it early and expected to play this morning. You know, being yeah. the, like, thank you, New Zealand, for, for, for testing the game out. <laughs> <laughs> and and also, I saw that I saw that uh, I, I don't I don't know this to be true, but I saw someone show the, the, the final scene with Batman. So I don't know if the game is actually just like playing the cutscenes, or you can just like watch like the rest of the cutscenes. But, but someone tweeted out the final scene with Batman. Um, I don't know if it's the final scene. It could not be. Uh, the p- people are, are are calling it a, because it's, it's not. It's not a great scene with Batman. Right. And so 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 it would be the, the the last scene with Batman as Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy. Oh. Uh, rest in peace. Mm, so I don't know if it's actually the uh, Kevin Conroy's last scene in the game. I don't know if actually it's, it's actually like like the last scene with Batman or that's what happens to Batman. I did watch it. I didn't like it. But then, when, when you, I, I didn't like it at all. I, I like, like it, it, it was definitely one of those those scenes where it, it was just like Joel in The Last of Us Two. Like I'm just like the, one of those Last of Us Two haters where it's like I saw that scene. I don't want to play this game anymore. Like oh. the, 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 the scene was bad enough that it, if that see. actually was that actually is what happens to Batman. Then yeah, I, I think I might actually not want to play the game anymore. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. 
so, so, so I have to stop myself from getting mad because I'm lacking context, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. sort it out, yeah. Rocksteady, because what the fuck happened there? Like, 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 how do you release a game and, and it finishes, it finish, it finishes it for you? That's crazy. That, I've never heard that before. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't think you've ever seen anything like that before. That's, That's crazy. <laughs> Different, different. That's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Suicide, Suicide Squad is being well, like it's trying to be different, like in in all the worst yeah. ways right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like many people. I'm super concerned about that game. I hope it turns out good. That's all I can hope. You know, because uh, Roxy, that legacy, with the story, man. Ooh. Please don't mess it up. Please, 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 please. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that it's like a decent time like single player like, like yeah it'd be, it'd be yeah, yeah. you know rocksteady games like, like the, the, their, their games were so immersive you know so that's, oh yeah that's, that's what that's oh, what yeah. i want to do i want to immerse myself like sure I, I don't i don't like the suicide squad as characters but I, I'll, I'll try the game out you know mm-hmm. so. let me be immersed yeah yeah let me be immersed uh okay we got a write-in for this also from zeke the plumber beloved mr ellis captain cog gene park from the washington post that's what everyone likes to say to you now. <laughs> your nickname. I have a random, or I have a pretty random sorted out. As an OLED screen enthusiast and a big fan of proper HDR implementation, such as Dead Space Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, etc., it really grinds my gears that in 2024, many games are launching with poor HDR or no HDR at all. Mm. I'm currently playing Power World and Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown right now, and neither has HDR. The Last of Us Part 2 Remaster has HDR, but doesn't support the system level calibration. So you lose you lose detail around the highlights as the signal exceeds the screen's max brightness. This was re- this is referred to as clipping. This happens way too often. HDR has been around for a while. Sort that shit out. <laughs> Side note, Gene. Oh, you're my hero, Gene. All right, Aww. Gene. Aww. Thanks, Zeke. From Zeke the plumber. Uh, Zeke. Yeah. HDR, like, please get that on lock. HDR is so awesome when it's imp- correctly implemented. So please, please, please mm-hmm. get that stuff going, man. I agree. All well, them OLEDs looking gorgeous. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Looks so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. 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 This is from Mike Held. I want to issue a sorted out to Sony. I just got the new Spider Man themed Dual Sense, and then two short months later, they announced the new SKU with a much larger battery life or longer battery life. Why? Seriously, why? Was this new battery not ready for Spider Man controllers? Sort it out, Sony. Well, man, yeah, I hate to say it, you just got bad luck from tech, man. In yeah. the tech world, dude, shit just rolls out constantly. They're always doing something. It just happens, man. Like if you buy a mm-hmm. GPU in computer world, you're you're cool for like six months and you're yep. obsolete. And I think it's a bummer. I wish like with Spider-Man, maybe they thought ahead to do that. But I don't know, man. It's just the way the cookie crumbles, dude. Yeah, it's just the way sucks. it is. It sucks. Yeah. I think absolutely. all those those poor people that buy a console, then they announce a new version or something or a price drop like a day or two later. Yeah. Yeah. I it mean, happens, man. Those- yeah, as a handheld guy, I'm in Rumblings right now about a ROG Ally 2 is about to come up. Like, I just got that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. the way it is, man. It yeah. sucks, but that's just how it goes. Yeah, facts. So hopefully something will work out for you in the future. Yeah. Also, I just I just remember fucking Suicide Squad was delayed for like a year, man. Dude, Gene, right? I think when they first announced it, they said it was going to be out in 2022. Then it got 2023. Now we're in 2024. So yeah, while. dude. And, and then we're experiencing this shit today. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that yeah. sucks, man. Mm-hmm. You know, online is such a weird thing for games because like sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not launching like with mm-hmm. MMOs, dude. I never expect them to be good. This the same first day. I never do. Day one. I'm like, I'm going to wait for it to settle out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know this has multiplayer, but as far as I'm aware, you're only four people a server or something like that. So mm-hmm. I I don't know what's going on, man. But it yeah, is it's not, like, it's not like power. It's not like power roll. The the the, the beast power roll. Dude, mm-hmm. the running <laughs> running with thirty two players at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. uh, this, is, this is this is a weak little Suicide Squad with only four characters. You know, yeah. That's why, man. <laughs> you got to be careful with your game purchases. 
if you're not sure about a game ever, <laughs> Power especially if it's been online. putting all these other games out to shame out here. Yeah, you know? it's yeah Power World just crushing it. <laughs> if you're not sure about a game, <laughs> don't pre-order it until it's out. Yeah, just wait. Sure. Just especially wait. if there's online only, dude, just wait till the day it's out. Especially wait. Especially if it's online hours. only. The, the, yeah, the most online, online, only, online wait, only. Wait a yeah. couple hours to see how it is before you pop in, because you don't want to drop a hundred bucks then not be able to play. That's yeah, just what true. was the last time an online game actually like launched like well on, on day I one? I don't know, like, man. I guess Diablo was not that bad. You yeah, know? Diablo was yeah. not bad. Diablo was think, not that bad. I think Blizzard's gotten much better at it. Yeah, from, Blizzard's gotten... Blizzard, because that's their thing. That's all they do, you know? Yeah, so. like I played WoW expansions and they would just yeah. be fine when they come out now. But uh, yeah. yeah, Blizzard's gotten pretty good at that. Yeah. Uh, this writing is from Metroid is better in 2D. Whoa. Mm, okay. Strong okay. I like it. Hey, Jedi Knight Brad, Sith Lord Cog, and Plucky Scoundrel Gene. <laughs> Whoever is currently in charge of the Kotor remake needs to sort it out. I recently played Kotor 1 and 2 via backwards compatibility on Xbox, and these games present some of the best stories and characters in Star Wars history. Releasing around the same time, the Kotor games completely outshine the horrendous prequel trilogy showing the way back in the early 2000s that storytelling can be done better in video games than in films. Now, KOTOR is a weird spot with me because I've never played KOTOR. And I, I really like Star Wars, so these have been games I've always wanted to play. They announced the remake. I was like, all right, cool. I'll wait for the remake. Now, I don't know if the remake's ever going to happen. So now I'm going to start asking Maddie. I'm like, hey, Maddie. Best way to play this game? PC with mods, Switch version, Xbox version. Which one I got to do now? Mm -hmm. uh, I think Perfect. Embracer's in charge of this, aren't they? Is this Embracer Group? Yeah, and I forgot that studio that, that Maddie's all upset about. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I believe it's them overall. But regardless, yeah, man, please, for Maddie's sanity, please deliver the goods, man. Yes. This poor guy. Bro, he goes. This poor it. guy, dude. He's going through it. Yeah. Going through it right Let's now. help him out. All right, dudes. It's time for Keep It Up. The exact opposite. Stuff we're pleased with. Who's doing good right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're jumping I think about this, too. Mm -hmm. jumping off. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, all right. I'm jumping off. Um, I'll stay in the same oh, main vein of, of kind of studios. Yep. But uh, but that's the game studios. I I, I like oh. I like what's going on. I feel like now they're getting into the cadence. I like you know as mm -hmm. far as um obviously with Hi Fi Rush, I thought was really fantastic. Yeah. A not great different tonal set for um those guys over at Tango. Thought that was great. Obviously, I am a huge Starfield fan, so I love Starfield. It's mm -hmm. not perfect. I understand it has its flaws, but for what they delivered, and obviously, Gene, we had that the spoiler cast and, and and learning, listening to you talk about the game, and all four of us have all these very you know experiences that some of us never experienced, and we were just blown away that the, the sheer content there. So you got that, and then I have to be honest, coming into the developer direct. I didn't know what to expect from Indiana Jones. And mm -hmm. that was a wild card. And I have to say, even as a person who likes the third person perspective, I thought what Machine Game Show did look phenomenal. And I was just like, okay, I'm interested. I'm really interested. I have confidence. So just Bethesda as a whole, you know, I think they're starting to get into their stride as far as um, de delivering for the um, Xbox platform. So, yeah, keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, the future's bright. I'm also a big uh, Ghostwire Tokyo fan. Yeah, the, um, me too. What goes on. I just think they're, they're really starting to hold Xbox down, <laughs> in my opinion, you know what I'm saying, as far as getting into it. Uh, 2022 is bad. We, we ain't going to talk. We ain't going to talk about Redfall. <laughs> We're going to leave mm -hmm. that alone. But as a whole, I, I like what they've been bringing to the table. Yeah, man. Um. Tango is like one of my favorite Xbox oh, devs. I love both love Evil Tango. Within's. I love Ghostwire. Me I didn't too. finish Hi-Fi Rush, but it was very good from what I played. Very good. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think they're one of their best teams, honestly, so far. I agree. They do For killer sure. games. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene, do you got anything, dude? Uh, I, in the same line as that, uh, I would say keep it up to the producers of the developer direct. Uh, you know, T yes. Tina Amini, the who used to work IGN, but that team. Uh, wow, well, this is easily the the hype, the most highly produced uh, 
prettiest looking uh, game platform uh, uh, press conference st- t- style deal we have. Nintendo Direct is iconic, right? Uh, right. With the executives and the, with the white background and everything that can't take that away. But in terms of just uh, you know the personability and the presentation, and it's really the closest thing to Apple because Microsoft is also you know, is, is, as we know now now is the other three trillion dollar company on, on in the history of the planet, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it makes sense that Microsoft is is now producing these beautiful beautiful presentations. So uh, shout out to Microsoft, despite the fact that you're laying people off, uh, <laughs> you know you know. Uh, right. Spending money on really, really good cameras uh, at the very least. <laughs> I'm, 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 ki- I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure that that wouldn't have saved, that I'm sure that wouldn't have saved any jobs. I like, and I'm not even saying that as a joke. I, that wouldn't have saved any jobs. I'm just joking. But I'm just saying that those fucking good, that your fucking commercials look really, really good. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, 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 good job for that. So, like, that's what I noticed. Uh, yeah. b- b- despite the layoffs, it, it is is really interesting to see Microsoft act like the three trillion dollar company it is and give give these uh, presentations you know uh, the, the real pop that they yeah. that they, they, they I don't think they need but you know that they, they could use I guess you know yeah because yeah. then you look at the Apple presentations and they're like next level like yeah. like, like they, they got humans and CGI like, like they, they <laughs> yeah. got their own Matrix Awakens like presentation style presentation <laughs> you know uh, they're, they're crazy with it so Microsoft isn't quite there yet we're still yeah. getting like glamour shots in the office and, and beautiful depth of field shots and shots and everything Ooh. but you know it's something Absolutely. yeah give it time give yeah. it time uh, mine's kind of weird, but I guess keep it up to the month of February. You were just mm-hmm. slamming games down on me hard. Like mm-hmm. I'm playing Grand Blue, then I get Persona Five or Three re- Reload oh, yeah, the next yeah. day, already killing me. Then there's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth later in the month. It's just like you're drowning me with quality video games right now. I'm annoyed, but I'm also in love with what you're giving me. I just wish they're spaced out a little, but I cannot. Yes. These games are just hitting all on all cylinders. This it's whole tough. year has started off with a bang. Mm, like 2024 yeah. year is going to be a good year of games. We only mm, know yeah. like the first half pretty much of the year too. Yeah. yeah. The actual dates. So it's going to be a good year. Like we're finally going to get Hellblade 2. We're going to see that finally. Yeah, yeah. Play it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely Finally the residue of, of, of the 2023 year banger year. Like like these games could have made 2023 uh, uh, even better. Yeah. But you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're here to make our 2024 good. So Yeah. It's like I got Elden Ring DLC waiting in the wings somewhere, ready to dude, come I, out. I, dude, I actually dreamt last night that it was announced, bro. Oh. <laughs> like, 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 like I'm, I'm fucking sick in the brain, man. But, yeah. but I dreamt that I saw it in a YouTube short. I, the, the, That's the, funny. I was scrolling through my phone and I saw the, the DLC announcement in a YouTube short and I was like calling my friends and then I woke up and it's time to be on the podcast. That's so. awesome. <laughs> oh, and of course, Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming out. Which Dragon's I'm Dogma so 2 is going to kill us, man. Good. So good. pumped, dude. Have you played Dragon's Dogma, Cog? I've never played it. I'm new to completely okay. new to the series and I have to admit, when I saw that trailer... I just playing, don't, don't play it. <laughs> don't, yeah, just, I just go straight yeah, to two. I can, I I can go see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just want really to go straight to two. Don't yeah, play, go yeah. straight to two. Okay, I cool. Think, okay. Yeah, I think you can just go into two, honestly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Don't, yeah. Play, don't play one anymore. <laughs> before before a year ago, yeah, I would have played part one. But this close, yeah, don't even bother. It's anymore. too close. Yeah. yeah. It's too close. And mm. I love part one, but it's kind of rough in a lot of ways. Cog. It's super, it's super rough. Mm. Yeah. By the time you learn how to play part one, part two will be out. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah. No, don't even, by the time, by the time you get to the good part of part one, part two will be out. That's part what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Part two look good. Yeah. For what I saw, I was just like, okay, it, it had a feel to it. And I love that. Uh, was it those giant type of yeah. running around? I was like, what is going mm-hmm. on? Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. So I, I yeah. think it, it has that sneaky, it might be a, blockbuster kind of energy if you, they you, can you, 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 the you, one of your party members can have the shield like captain america and then you can jump on the shield and that person will launch you up in the air so yeah. you can grab the so you can grab the monster up in the air and hold on to it and then fight it in the air like that's, that's the shit that's mm-hmm. the type of shit that dragon this dogma is on you know mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's crazy and it's, it's really fun it. using like your friend's pawns mm-hmm. in your party Yes. or whatever like yeah. that the pawn exactly. system I, I can't even explain it right now but it's yeah, so weird it's and so, but it's actually good and fun you know yeah 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 all right curry powder wrote in with one hello summoning crew long time first time 
I have a keep it up, and I think both Cog and Gene will appreciate this. Keep it up, handheld PCs. I recently oh, yeah. bought a ROG Ally. Is it ROG? Is that how you say it? ROG oh, or ROG? Rog. They say RG, I say ROG. Okay, we'll say ROG. Cog <laughs> is like Cog. I'm calling it ROG. <laughs> I like yeah, recently. I like, you know. Exactly. Thanks, thanks to the Dukes talking so highly of it. Mm. I never would have considered getting a handheld PC otherwise, but I'm loving it. And having my entire Steam and Game Pass library in handheld form is amazing. Not to mention being able to do PS5 remote play as well. Devices like Steam Deck, ROG Ally, and Legion Go are getting increasingly more popular, and I think they've, they've changed the handheld landscape for the better. Keep it up, and keep up the great work, LSM crew. Yeah, man, it seems mm-hmm. like handheld PCs are definitely more popular and more mm-hmm. affordable than ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's great, man. Yeah, like I know man. Dustin got the another Steam Deck recently for the OLED. He's got OLED. Yeah. They got him. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I, got, <laughs> I got the regular the OLED too. Uh, oh, they got Gene as well. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the Steam Deck has definitely deepened my relationship with PC. PC Ooh, games. That's it, awesome. It, yeah, it definitely got Amen. me used to to get, getting me okay with the idea of not owning any PC games like on physical because it's like the phys- the physical is right here. It's in my hand. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. that's it. That's true. Yeah, it's right yeah. there. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a guy. So for a person like me who travels all the time, mm. like I actually look forward to long periods of wait. I mean, oh, I could just catch up now. I'm waiting for my flight, or I'm on a, a long flight, or at the doctor's office. Yeah, I got that all out. I'm catching up, and then to me, one of the um, key features, obviously, is obviously Steam, the the Game Pass aspect, downloading those locally, and Windows Play anywhere. So, like for example, if I'm playing, you know, Persona. What is it? Uh, what was the, the one that came out? Tactica that came out. I was playing mm-hmm. that, and I believe it was playing anyway. And then from there, my save data was already up when I was doing it on, on, on the uh, on the handheld. And I think that's the future. That synergy between you know PC, console, mobile devices. I love that kind of stuff. And yeah. I think shout out to Cyberpunk, who also had the uh, like I said the the cross progression in and Bulge's game. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love when mm-hmm. companies mm-hmm. implement that because I'm like, yes, I can take mm-hmm. it on my handheld. On the go and keep going. These yeah. games are big. We need we need time to finish them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> playing Cyberpunk on my Xbox Xbox Series and then just moving the, the exact same save on a Steam Deck. That's crazy. Oh, so good. yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, just a cyber lad wrote in. Greetings, warriors of a gigantic mirth. Got a very random keep it up for y'all. Recently. I've dived headfirst into Robert E. Howard's World of Conan the Barbarian. And I wanted Mm -hmm. wanted to shout out Funcom, who's out here keeping that world alive with their games, whether it be Old Age of Conan MMO, which is still active, the very well-made survival game Conan Exiles, or the Horde-based RTS Conan Unconquered. A huge keep it up to Funcom for making great and unique Conan games. Fingers crossed for more games in the future, and remember, what is best in life is to crush one's enemies and to hear the lamentations of the women. <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out to Conan, dude. Salute. Yeah, man. And Conan, Conan the Conqueror is so like formative in my youth. Like Conan was always there. Like yeah. he, he's not a real person, right? Like, 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 like <laughs> I dead ass like believe like for in most most days that Conan the Barbarian it, it was just a historical figure, like Attila the Hun or like yeah, Genghis Khan or Hitler or something. Like that. Yeah, he's <laughs> real in your heart, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this one's from Billy B. Hello, boys. I wanted to throw out a controversial keep it up, and that's Rocksteady. I know they've been getting crap kicked, getting the crap kicked out of them lately, but many of the features of Suicide Squad are super cool and player friendly in regards to looter shooters. They've got no FOMO on all their content, no level cap on endgame content, pretty substantive free DLC for at least the next year, and many features like New Game Plus coming on day one. I put about 15 hours in the closed alpha last year, which made me a fan. And I think this may be the first Ludisher to actually drag me away from Destiny. Mm. Really enjoy the show, Brad. Keep Ooh. it up. Wow, that's a not opinion I hear very often, but I'm happy to hear that. That's good. I Look, I'm, disappointed. Able- I'm disappointed in today because I, I, it'd be nice to play it right now, you know? <laughs> I don't like to play it right I now. I hope you're able to play it, or I hope you yeah, get $100. Yeah, I hope you're able to play it today, man, you know? Because it sucks that we can't play it right now. Yeah, yeah. man. That does suck, but uh, hopefully it'll work out for you, Billy. 
It's yeah. not, I mean, if you enjoyed the alpha, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the game quite a bit. Yeah, I'm supposed so. to be getting a review code for it, but they haven't yet gotten given it to us because the game's not even online. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jeez. Damn, that's dude. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, boys. It's time for a little Power World talk. This has taken the world by storm. This goofy little Pokemon game with guns or whatever. It's blown up. Like insane, I've seen insane Steam numbers, people on Xbox playing it. Everybody's playing it. I'm not playing it. I haven't played it at all, but you guys have both played a little bit of it at least. Tell me about this. What the hell is Power World? Gene, I gotta let you set this off. Yeah, this I, you. I, I have about like maybe 16 hours of Power World uh, on me right now. So Power World is a, a, a Pokemon. It is not Pokemon with guns. It is an Ark Survival a Minecraft-like um, but uh, instead of having uh, human slaves back at your camp, you have Pokemons. And that's the fun part. Okay. Uh, the fun part of Power World is not that you are fighting Pokemon. Uh, the fun part of Power World is that you are using the Pokemon to create a whole community uh, that is self-sustaining and self-working. And it's basically a, an automation uh, game where uh, you take all your powers back to your base and uh, they just start working immediately, automatically. And uh, the, 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 the point of the game for now, it seems to be, is to keep up, keep that up, basically. Uh, okay. the, 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 create these bases, explore, catch pals, I guess, uh, figure things out. Uh, the, the, the game begins by telling you that, that, that tr- the tree has the secrets, but you can't get to the tree right now because the game is still in early access, right? Uh, so I think that that's what you know, that, that's what I had to, to remind myself before I go in too hard on Power World and, uh, and sure. how it, that there doesn't seem to be much going on there. Uh, probably because it's an early access, and they probably did, they probably didn't they probably haven't thought about the rest of the, the rest of the game yet. Right. Yeah. Um, but th- that that is definitely the game. Uh, w- w- once you realize that you're not really because you're not going to catch when you see a water type Pokemon. Uh, you're catching the water type Pokemon because you're like, ooh, I need that water type Pokemon because I'm going to the fire gym and I'm about to fi- fight the fire type Pokemon. So I, mm-hmm. so I need the water type Pokemon to fight the fire type Pokemon, right? Uh, in Pal World, you're not getting the water type Pal because uh, you, you want to fight the fire type Pals. You're taking the water type Pal because they're good at watering. So you're going to take them back to the literal <laughs> plantation so they can so, so they can plant and water the little berries and the literal, literal wheat and they're really good at that and and that's why I have a bunch of water type pet Pokemon or pals back at, back in my base. Um, the guns come in because it's fun. <laughs> I, I think they just put it. It, it, it did it. Like, they, they they could have been a little bit more imaginative with the weapons. Like they, they could have, they did they probably they probably could have done a little bit hard, worked a little bit harder. That's how you know this game. Like they didn't really work hard that hard in this game. Like maybe this game is an AI made, and maybe this game <laughs> this game is a plagiarized. But like they they really put no effort into like making the guns like look any kind of like unique type of world or whatever like that because power world is just power world there's no story in it uh, that there's no culture there's no there's no anything you, you, you like here you are in power world and 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 then like 10 hours later you make an ak-47 or M, M, m16a2 uh, exactly <laughs> like like the, 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 these these human models of guns you know um but uh, the, the guns can be used for hunting. You know, they, they're basically uh, part of your weapon. Uh, so, so you the, the first gun you get is like this really makeshift like pistol gun. Uh, I call it the Shinzo Abe gun, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the gun that killed Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. You know, oh, uh, the, 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 the one that he, he just made it together yeah. with a bunch of parts, yeah. whatever, like that. Yeah, that, that's exactly what this guy, this kind of gun is. <laughs> and then you get, and then you can make a regular pistol, and then you you, you can make a shotgun, and then a, a, like a musket rifle. Uh, that that reloads every every few seconds. Uh, so y- you eventually uh, uh, level up in terms of of, of getting stuff. So mm-hmm. you you go back and you're, you're leveling up your 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 building meter and you're leveling up your base meter. And the more pals you get, and the and the better your base gets, and the more higher your level gets, and the more you're able to build up more technology. So you can build up more technology, so you can have more weapons and more tools and more more stuff back at base to put pal stuff back. So it's a really 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 good like loop of gear and doing stuff and, and and turning things around and that's what makes this that that, that is exactly what makes this game so addictive it, it's just really mm-hmm. really fun you know so there is no like uh end game objective or anything like that i haven't really found that 
the the end game objective seems to be unlocking all what's basically called pieces of technology. Um, so as you're increasing uh, your base level uh, and and your regular level, you, you can you can have access to greater levels of technology. So that's why mm-hmm. you can start with a Shinzo Abe gun and then you go up to the musket. And then you go up to a shotgun, and then you go go up to the AK forty seven, and then you go up to the M sixteen, and you can start having rocket launchers and stuff like that too. So it's okay. very gradual. That, that it's, it's not all just guns too. You, you can you can get a different glider, like like your Breath of the Wild glider. You can get a different style of glider for that one. You can get uh, better beds for your pals, uh, be- better foundations for your buildings. Uh, but it's all in service of greater technology. So ultimately, I feel like what this game is saying is that if you don't give a shit about slavery uh, <laughs> and, 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 and what slavery does to people and, and other living things, uh, the, 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 you, you can basically speed run your way to technology because the Great Pyramids aren't gonna, isn't going to build themselves, you know? <laughs> True. The, 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 they, the, the pyramids didn't build themselves out of volunteer right. work. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) People weren't being paid paid fair wages to build that 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 nonsense, you know. (laughs) Fair wages, yeah, to build the pyramids. So, are you you only enslaving these pal Pokemon, whatever the fuck they're called, pals? So so you can enslave pals. You can also enslave humans because there there are humans around. But the the the, but but you are disincentivized to use the, the humans as slaves because they're they're not as good as pals. Oh, so, yeah. So it's that's like, what how you this have game do? kind of shakes around, like like whether you can be a human slave. Like you can enslave humans if you want, but they're not as good. So you know, what are they? What what are some like human tasks you would have them do? I mean, you can still make them like walk around and like water or or, or carry stuff around okay. or whatever. You know, but they're the pals are much better. Essentially, yeah, the, like like the, the pals would be better at like 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 tending to the furnace or whatever because the fox the, the firefox would be better at burning okay. the furnace, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. So now uh, my 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 base right now is called the Washington Post, and and I, I now have two conveyor belt supply <laughs> supply lines, mm-hmm. uh, one for handgun pistols because I like uh, rocking a, a, a pistol. Mm-hmm. and one for uh, ingot so I can make more like. Weapons like swords and stuff like yeah. that too. So, because I, I have a sword now too. So, Ooh. okay. Yeah. Are there um, like bosses out in the world or anything like that? There are bosses. So you have to go to a tower, and uh, what's funny is that you go to this. Ta- they just tell you go to this tower, and then you go to the tower, and then suddenly like this pink hair, like like girl in, a, in like a baseball cap and a leather jacket. She's all cool looking and everything like that. She looks like a TikTok girl or whatever. Comes out <laughs> and then she's she writes this huge pal, and then you fight her, and then she's super high level for for some reason. So uh, even though she's the first boss, like you think like oh. Like 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 everyone goes up to her thinking that, that oh I'm level twelve I should be ready for the first boss and then mm-hmm. like she spanks you in like two hits um, for some reason th- these bosses are really really high level I don't understand the scaling of uh, 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 the difficulty of this game but there are bosses I only fought the one the one girl um, and then you basically just you can just shoot her or you can just do stuff there there are also field bosses too there was an incredible incredible uh, uh, viral tweet of a bunch of uh, really, really low level uh, pal hunters, uh, but they were up against a level 38, like woolly mammoth type of deal. <laughs> and so they, they, they can only do like one HP damage to this thing. So they can't kill him, right? But what right. they learned how to do is that they learned that the, the mammoth is weak against fire and setting up campfires is one of the, one of the, a campfire is one of the first things you can build in pal world. So what they did it was just get a bunch of wood, and they 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 covered the field in campfires, and they started le- kiting this mammoth around into the fire, and it started getting damaged, and the mammoth died. <laughs> Yo, all they did was just kite the mammoth around, like, doing one HP damage, but the fire as it was walking through the campfires was doing the real damage, and they took it down. That's crazy. Uh, that that's is hilarious. crazy. That's crazy. They got a huge boost in level level loss for that. That's awesome. And so that's what's <laughs> sick about Power Roll. It becomes like it, it becomes a little bit like fucking like like Elden Ring a little bit you know it's mm-hmm. crazy you know mm-hmm. yeah they should let you be free and 
do random stuff. Yeah. I, I really love that when they just take the reins off you, man. They just like <laughs> kill a yeah. woolly, woolly idea, mammoth that, with fire pits. Yeah, the idea that you could do that, like like really shows you like like come on, Power World is more than just like a, a flash of the pan. Like like there's a really, really mm-hmm. good game. There's like, something like, there, yeah. There, there's yeah. there's definitely cool. something interesting and fun. And, and they were cracking up the whole time. They were having a great time. And for, yeah. and obviously that's a, that that sounds like a fun ass time, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so obviously you got in the world for some resources and all that kind of stuff. Is mm-hmm. there anything else like out there besides like maybe a normal resource to give you incentive to explore? Like, are there really cool like structures or something? Maybe there like- are structures. There, there, okay. there are actual like locations. So as I started to wander around, I, uh, dude, the biome diversity in Power World is ridiculous. For Ooh, I can't, really? I can't believe the biome diversity is more diverse than Halo Infinite. Like, they're so fucked, man. But the biome diversity in Power World is crazy. Like, I am on like a volcano land. I like, like I found myself in the desert, and there was a whole whole sphinx pal there oh, so they, oh. they're actually like creating like like inter- like i found a whole ancient like te- technological city so you know it, it, it's your very very typical open world like like post post apocalyptic stuff like but it's it's there uh, mm-hmm. i haven't really like explored that much of it but, but there's definitely stuff there that you can build around you know yeah cool <laughs> cog how's your experience been with it yeah very limited i mean initially I just wanted to know what the craze was about. I was like, all mm-hmm. right, because Maddie teases me because like I always have this joke that I don't I have like this rule. Where I don't play like super cutesy games. I've never played a Pokemon game. I've never mm, played okay. a lot of stuff like this because I'm like, I always tell me I don't want to be the old guy at the playground. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will be the old creepy guy like, hey, kids, what are we doing today? Like, I just it's, I felt I'm too old for it. So. There's a part of me that was like, all right, it's probably not going to be a game for me. But then when I started hearing about it, learning about it, and then I saw 16G's tweets, I'm seeing people that I respect say, no, I'm having a ball. And when I started to learn what the game was, and I was like, oh, you can, <laughs> you could beat cute animals up and enslave them. I thought that was hilarious. I was like, <laughs> this is hilarious. And then like, you know, guns and all this other stuff. So I'm like, all right, I got to at least see what's going on so when i you know i first started it i was like i don't know why i was getting like breath of the wild vibes just even mm. from the way the icons you know you pick up stones and you pick up things everything is kind of interactable in that respect but the, I was the, like, the, the, their fucking uh, temperature meter is the same as, as breath of the yeah. wild too you know i'm like this is i was like if anybody's <laughs> like the hot and cold meter is the same shit you know it's the same thing so i'm like breath of the wild, i, 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 I don't think, think they changed it i don't think they changed the ui at all from that one at i think all. it's the exact same thing <laughs> same you know? ui bro i was getting Zelda vibes from the beginning. Then I'm like, all right, cool. So clearly the you know the, the Pokeball Power World thing. Clearly that part's inspired, and clearly some creatures are inspired. It's, we can't talk about the elephant. There's some because I don't play these games, so I had to go to Attic, and I'm like, Attic, yo. He's like, bro, I'm gonna send you something, and he's like, showing me Lucario and then this one and Anubis. And I'm like, oh, someone trace someone little, 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 little. characters. They, they look close. They look they look inspired, but it. That's it. Honestly, that's the only thing that I see. The rest of the game is completely its own thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, to me, again, is it? I think po- Pokemon is turn based. This is not. Um, I love the survival aspect and the fact that they're actually you, you capture them to actually do things for your community and and build stuff up. I thought that was dope. So yeah, and, and, and here's the thing. As a person like me, I really don't historically like survival games. I feel sometimes mm-hmm. they're too daunting, too. they're too much, and it's mm-hmm. like get seventy five things and do this, you'll be able to make a furnace. And all. like I don't, <laughs> you know, what I mean? like it just doesn't click with me. Like the few sure. that have clicked any with me game have that makes me hungry, I, I, I'm, yeah. almost, I'm out almost immediately. You know, Generally, I don't want to be hungry in a video game, guys. You know? <laughs> Generally, I, I, I'm out too. So it's like mm-hmm. it takes a special game. To be a survival game, like again, like the state of the cage, the grounded, I felt did a good job. And the reason why Power does a good job is it holds my hand. It'd be like, okay, you need to do this. Okay, now, like, I like a checklist. Mentally, it keeps me involved. And then the little technology thing. So I was like, okay, this mm. is cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm learning what I need to do. Okay, I got to get this axe. I got to start ore in this material. This is going to let me get the Powerball thing. You know, hey, you know, I'm going to, you know, build the, the thing for the um the pals to kind of to house them and stuff like that. So I just thought that was well done. The onboarding for a new player. And yeah, and then I, I tried the uh, the multiplayer and w- with friends, and 
it's a black. Like, I get it. I'm like, yo, mm-hmm. I see the addiction here. And to me, the number one indictment, I think, is why it's doing so well. And if I had to guess, I would say that this is, to me, an outcry from the Pokemon community saying, Nintendo, this is the kind of stuff we want from you, mm. and you're not improving the formula. Mm-hmm. And generally, sometimes the new guy will end up surpassing you. And I've seen mm-hmm. this before. I've seen this even with um, when the Battle Royale space came out with um, PUBG, and PUBG was right. the rage, right? Mm-hmm. And then here came Fortnite. Oh, mm-hmm. we can help with the engine. Fortnite was a completely different game, and then transformed into a Battle Royale. They had that as a as an added mode, mm-hmm. and then look what happened. So yeah. if Nintendo's not careful, and I look at the support, I look at the, the Twitter account of, what is it, Pocket Pair, I believe, that it's mm-hmm. that makes Power World. Bro, they're adding support. We're going to do PvP. We're going to do raids. We're going to do this. But we're going to fix the core game first. And then, like, they've got a roadmap. I thought that was impressive. The game just came out. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think it's... I think, I think the roadmap is bullshit, but I think they just came up with it, like, this past week. <laughs> I just like they talked about it. Even, even, even if it, it, we don't see this thing going to yeah. exist in three years, I just like the fact that they were ambitious these, enough to say this. people are talented, but they're, I, I think they're flying by the seat of their pants talented, you know? I bet they will hit their roadmap, but but I am absolutely sure that they, I feel like they just they just came up with it too. So just came up with it. Yeah, <laughs> could be could be that white boy uh, meeting that just happened. But yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I think I think it's gonna be around for a while. This thing is not slowing mm. down. It's to the yeah. point now, Brad. I literally just refreshed the Twitter account. I'm like, damn, eight million now. Damn, like it was six million like two days ago. Like, what yeah. is going on? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, salute salute to them. They they're killing it, and I, I expect it conti- to continue. Yeah, insane amount of success. I remember yeah. I saw a trailer for this a while ago and I was like, eh, looks pretty bad. I mean, I don't think it looks great still, but like there's something no, about it, it that people just love. Yeah, there's the animations are still jammed and everything like that too, for sure. Yeah, um, people, but, like, dude, a lot of people will put up with that stuff if they like the game. Mm-hmm. Like so many PC games I've seen that are just like, you know, not show pieces visually or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah stiff animations like a lot of people just don't mm-hmm. care yeah. but i think that's pretty cool i think i think kog you hit in the head about how accessible it is to you because you don't like survival games right and like n- neither neither do i but i think what pocket pair was able to do is like okay you guys you all you all you all guys don't like survival games well what if we put pokemon the most popular thing on the fucking planet in there and the pokemon will teach you how to how to do the survival game and then you get to do the survival along with your pokemon yeah. that is what got me into this where i yes. was like and and I, you you said it too it's many more accessible yes mm-hmm. All the, the the language of like oh the water poke the Pokemon the water pal and then they're 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 water in this thing like that dumbass language like makes makes this makes this a lot more fun for me you know <laughs> for for dumbass people like me where oh I put the water thing in the water p- the place and then blah 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 you know and then so now I'm having fun but yeah. also I, the, to to add to your point about people wanting this from Pokemon yeah. uh, the funny thing about Pokemon is that like you don't really interact with your Pokemon all that much. Uh, I play I play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, I booted it up right at the Power World, right? And the the funny thing was is that fuck all I'm doing with these Pokemon is fighting. All I'm doing all I'm doing is catching them and I'm fighting them and I, and we're we're in the, the I'm trying to fight the elite for it. I'm training them, blah blah blah. Whereas I go into Power World and then I can do like ha- happy patty cake and I I can pet them and I'm doing like on the ground immersive style yes. uh, interactions with my pals and that yes. is something that we have never, never seen. ever gotten in Pokemon. Yeah. So mm. it kind of reminds me of like the Starfield situation where Starfield flying doesn't really feel really feel like flying because you're just, just kind of being in space, right? Like I think Pokemon, the only way you can do Pokemon interactions is you have to go into a separate menu and then you move around the mouse cursor and then you can pet them there, right? And it always mm-hmm. feels weird, like you're in a the different yeah. dimension of of interaction with Pokemon. Yeah, it's right? very disconnected. It's very very disconnected. Whereas in Power World, I, I, me and my third person camera controls will walk up to the pal and we can just pet them, or I could just mm-hmm. pick them up and I could just toss them around or do whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um Pokemon has been missing that kind of yes. like on the ground, like tactile uh, yeah. uh, interaction with their Pokemon. And like the fact that we're only getting this in Power World is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And last point to add on to your point, which is also 
what I think is absolutely hilarious and adds personality to get is that the Pokemon have, I mean, the Powells have like their own personality traits. This one's right. depressed. This one, like, you've yeah, got to like yeah. do conditions to kind of help them. But then, uh, there's one that I see all on, online that is like Depresso, like Depresso, the guy with yeah, Depresso. Yeah, Depresso's a hit, man. Yeah, bro, they've got something, man. Yeah, um, they're, 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 Depresso's the main character, I think, at this point, man. Depresso's their Pikachu, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I just love it. Like, it, like Maddie was telling me a story. He's like, he did all this stuff, and one of them, we came back. He's like, bro, how are you falling asleep on the job? Like, I did all this stuff for you. Like, he was getting mad at some of his pals. Like, they yeah. were, <laughs> and he felt like he was doing Like, it's that game within the game mm-hmm. that allows you to connect mm-hmm. with those pals, like, you know, unlike the way Pokemon does it. Yeah. Also. And again, this game is still in early access. So, like, like as Manny was saying, so, sometimes the pals won't do shit because uh, I think the AI is fucked up. Yeah. Um, so, so like, 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 you all think that the AI can make the, those those uh, those awesome cute creatures? The AI can't even walk around the fucking farm, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's funny. Uh, Peter M. wrote in, love the show. Old school and television gamer here with a Destiny addiction mm. currently. Right. Power World. Mm. Never played a Pokemon game and no interest in ever doing so. With all the hype for Power World, what is there in this game for folks who don't care about Pokemon? Generally curious about or generally curious what the appeal is apart from the central hook. Keep up the good work. So doesn't like Patter doesn't like Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there stuff here for him? It's not yeah. Pokemon. And it sure as hell sounds like it from what you guys told me. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you can, you don't like Pokemon. It sounds like you can enslave them yes. and make them build stuff for you and make them work. Yeah. Put them to work. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the thing, man. I'm telling you. I, I, again, you know, I forgot the whole thing that wrote in. Like that's as a person who doesn't like it. I'm literally the yeah. test subject. I'm the guy that they mm-hmm. got me. To say, yo, this game is fun. There you go. Yeah. 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 I, I tried Valheim uh, back when it was popular. Um, you know, I recognized that it was a good game, but I was like, I'm bored. You know, what, what am sure. I? I'm just, I'm just a Viking in the forest. That doesn't really, that doesn't really <laughs> excite me right now. You need know? machine guns. Yeah, I need machine guns and pals, and and, yeah. and, and that's that's what makes it exciting, you know. But the pal world is is interesting, even though it's like very generic, like Unreal world asset type stuff but then the world yeah. they design is actually pretty uh, pretty okay too yeah. they, got, they got something there you know that's yeah. cool yeah that's awesome <laughs> yeah uh also if you're curious about the game it's on game pass yeah, yeah. just give it a shot yeah, and, it's, shot. and if you want to buy it it's 30 bucks it's, it's not that much bucks. money mm-hmm. so yeah. yep 30 yeah, bucks yeah. Just, to, just to check out the game in the moment, you know? Yeah, I'm actually surprised curious, they yeah. haven't sold 9 million or 10 million by now. So so Ooh. I'm actually surprised it slowed down at this yeah. point. We'll see. All right, this is from Radic Shepherd. Hello, summoning crew. At what point does Power World's creatures design go from parody to ripoff? Is it not the point that they look like Pokemon? So it or is it not the point that they look like Pokemon? So it adds to the authenticity of the parody? Thanks, and I'll shut up now. I mean, it's already uh, a ripoff. Yeah, <laughs> it's already a ripoff. It's it's fun, but but it's yeah. fine though. You know, that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. a ripoff, and I think the developers are fine with that. And it sounds like most people playing it are fine yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very funny when I see some of the comparisons. I'm oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Colin would talk about that. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 RD, the, the RDC World skit. Did you guys see that one? <laughs> no. no. Uh, RDC no. World had a skit where uh, oh, Pokemon. It's- Pokemon is trying to tell a lawyer, and he's like, "That's that's clearly Anubis." And he's like, "No, but he's yellow." And he's like, so scared. <laughs> and then he's like "Hold on, getting text," and he's like, clearly good, like texting like the power guys. Like, don't don't worry, uh, don't worry, guys. I got you. You know, yeah. bro, that skit is hilarious. I did. That's I just funny. caught that. Yeah, the lawyer that's trying to like, and he's just, just like staring at him like. <laughs> It's, it's different. It's different. It's different. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Man, that's funny. All right. Next game on the list is Resident Evil Remake. Originally the GameCube title. Man, I remember getting that game day one mm. at EB Games. What a day. That was a magical EB. day. Magical day on the GameCube. Uh, obviously, this game got remastered for like hd textures it was on ps4 pc xbox all that good stuff so i've played this game many times uh this is probably my favorite resident evil game still of all time so the first the first one the first one the remake yeah i absolutely love this game Mm -hmm. it's got some problems but i just love it 
Uh, what's been fun about this playthrough, actually, though, is I've been doing a little third party tool action on this mm-hmm. and doing a randomizer. Mm. So what that means is all the items are random. What I pick up, I don't know what I'm going to get. The enemies are also random. I don't know who I'm going to fight. This oh counts. God. This counts for bosses as well. For instance, Ooh. the the snake yawn at one point, one part turned out to just be a normal zombie. So I was like, OK, <laughs> whatever, I guess. But even playing through the randomizer, I could still see the genius of this remake and how well it is designed. First of all. Shinji Mikami came back for this, the original creator of Resident Evil. He came back and did this game also. And this is one of the finest examples of a remake, in my opinion, in history of gaming. Totally. It made it built off everything of the first game, like everything, and just added more onto it. It didn't take away stuff like as much as I really love Resident Evil 2 remake. There's some stuff missing in there that I wish was in the remake. Mm. Like the like items carrying over to scenario A and B and stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is just a, such a goddamn fantastic game. And one big reason is obviously is because of the location, which is the Spencer Mansion, mm-hmm. a very spooky, haunted mansion. You got big halls, you got your chandeliers, you got your nice big dining areas. But then you go through a very tight hallway or something like that, some bedrooms, you know, because there's people that were living here and it's some shit's gone down and everyone's a zombie. Everything's a zo- everything's messed up virus leak. Mm-hmm. So it's great going through. Of course, you got your two selectable characters, Chris and Jill. Chris can take more hits, but he has less um, item slots. Jill, more item slots, take less hits. But she also mm-hmm. gets the lock pick, which is very nice. Oh, yeah. Helping out. And man, this game still looks good for how old this game is. A, f- a showpiece like I remember when this mm-hmm. game came out I was blown away but like even playing it today in 2024 this game still holds up visually it's so it still it's looks crazy. better than most games yeah, yeah it's honestly. crazy even the pre they did a really good job with the pre-render backgrounds too that mm-hmm. they still look pretty damn good because you know those can look kind of muddy on like HD versions and all that stuff mm-hmm. But I think I just it it gives me this feeling whenever I play this game of just like it's terrifying. But at the same time, I'm I feel comfort in this Spencer mansion mm-hmm. as horrible. It is like people die in death everywhere. <laughs> Something's trying to kill you constantly. I just love this space. It feels lived in, man. You go mm-hmm. into rooms, you see like the place where like scientists were sleeping and stuff like that. You get their notes, slowly learning about stuff going on, talking about that. Then the famous note, you know, uh, Gene, the itchy, tasty note mm-hmm. about the guy slowly turning into a zombie yeah. as he's writing the notes, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. And just some of the, like um, the new that stuff. Note like, changed, that, note, that note changed my life, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What a note, man. And just like yeah. some of the added stuff, like the um, Lisa Trevor walking around, like her whole backstory with her dad, George Trevor, who designed the mansion and all that mm-hmm. stuff and how she's like she's like uh her hands are like cuffed and she's like all disfigured and you can't kill her she's so powerful i love that she's one of those figures you just you got to run from her when you see her Mm -hmm. it's not too often but it's really intimidating whenever she shows up Mm -hmm. which i think is important for survival Mm -hmm. horror game and just the variety it's like not only are you in the mansion like the main mansion but you also get to go out to like the worker area like their whole like bunks and all that stuff then of course finding out about the lab going down the lab and there's the sharks Bye. there and there's neptune the like the the big shark that'll eat you if you don't drain the water and all that stuff it's just so god does a randomizer replace perfect. a shark uh, so it, the shark was there actually okay. it, you don't have to like shoot it but i like gene i'm nervous because you could set what you want to appear like i have right. all the bosses just appear at one time but i sure. don't know where but I'm nervous like a super tyrant or something is just going to show up <laughs> in a very inconvenient place and just tr- like take me down. Yeah. Like this run has been really stressful because I've gotten an insane amount of hunters who are arguably the mo- like the most deadly normal enemies in the game. I've mm-hmm. gotten them like you get normal zombies in Resident Evil. It's just oh, been man. nonstop hunters at me. But it's been oh. it's been so fun just piecing together this puzzle of getting an item just being like okay i know the game well enough but now they're 
it's flipping it's on its head now right so i just like move around through the whole mansion just slowly unraveling this puzzle is so satisfying to me and with the randomizer i didn't even got as crazy as you can get like you can do it so it randomizes the doors you go through like oh, wow. you can go through a door early on then just be in the lab and you got to try to piece all of this together Wow. You could like set more bosses in different spots like that. You can get rid of some items. I think you can randomize a lot of stuff. So it's really impressive. But even with all of that, I think Resident Evil Remake on its own is a stellar game and one of the best, one of the greats, in my opinion. It's definitely an older game. There's it shows, of course, but I still think there's something to this game. That's special, like the things that to me that stick out is probably the least friendly now or the door loads. Every time you open the door, it loads True. or does the door animation. And probably the character movement for a lot of people is rough. Good I'm rotate. used to it, so it's fine for me. But they did do some nice things like adding um, more modern controls. The so it's controls, not as tanky. Yeah, yeah the modern, oh, you cool. can just run around a lot easier. Nice. But there are still the door loading and stuff like that. I know. Like I knew the doors drove Dustin crazy when he played <laughs> through it semi recently. <laughs> You play on PC, you can just mod those out. So keep that in mind if you really nice. need to. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's dope. But yeah, Resident Evil Remake, I cannot recommend it enough. It's a, to me, a classic, an all time great of the survival horror genre. The birth, the modern birth of survival horror, I would say. So please check it out. It's usually pretty cheap, too. It's on like everything. I think it's on Switch even now. Blue yep. Yep. Yeah, it's on everything. So please. I know a lot of people came into Resident Evil later with like RE2 remake and four, which is totally fine. But it's, if you just kind of want to see where things were at before, yeah, go on back. And it's cool. not very long. Yeah. It's not go too long. To the OG. No, you can, I, I can beat it in an hour and a half. You know? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. You can, speed if you're speed run it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I, I'm a resident. Um, speed runner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Gene, I know you're a big RE guy. You talked to my buddy Huber many mm-hmm. times or a while ago about Resident Evil. Cause you guys are so passionate about it. I know. Yeah. That was Tell so me, fun. Tell me about your first time playing this game. Yeah, uh, remake, right? First time playing yeah. remake or part yeah. one? Per- uh, first time I mean, remake. you can do part one, but I, yeah, I'm I mean, more part one I play, I, Yeah, part one I played it back in the day. You know, and I, yeah. I, I, honestly, go check out that that episode with Huber. It was a good time. Uh, mm-hmm. Just look up Huber and Gene Park. Um, but yep. you know, I played Resident Evil One back in the day. Uh, I was I was enchanted by it, but because it looked like adult final fantasy you know uh, mm. because it looked like final fantasy 7 because it, they, they both use pre-rendered backgrounds but they're not chibi size these are regular ass people so that's right. what i was most excited for i was like oh my god this is violent bloody final fantasy 7 you know <laughs> um that's how i viewed it so i always viewed resident evil as a sort of a like a like a different kind of role playing or adventure game mm-hmm. um but remake uh oh man when it, i was so excited for this one like i, I don't know i don't like this was I was excited for this one as you could be excited for, I guess, Resident Evil 2 or Final Fantasy yeah. 7 Remake back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, I heard that Shinji Mikami was coming back. So, so you know, this was already at the time when the information economy for video games was already starting up. So, like, I, you could hear about things like, ooh, the creator of Resident Evil is back for, for the remake. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's going to be really good. And then I, I played it with my girlfriends uh, at my girlfriend's house. Uh, I was living in L.A. at the time. Uh, so, so she lived in Southgate, uh, California, ninety eight percent his uh, Latino community. Uh, but we used to play so many horror games together. We were such <laughs> huge fans of Silent Hill. Uh, we played Silent Hill one through four together. I mean, I experienced Silent Hill games with her. You know, yeah. Uh, That's but dope. and she she was uh, big into Resident Evil, but she never played Resident Evil one. So that that was oh. that was that was our thing. That, uh, that I was introducing her to Resident Evil, but. This was also a new game to me, so it was such a fun experience to to be able to to to, to show her like Resident Evil, uh, but also this was a new experience. So when the dogs didn't show, go through the window, right, I, was like, yeah. I was like, oh, it, it, it was like the biggest delight of my life, you know, because like we were both surprised or something, and I, and, and like she didn't get surprised, and then and then when it happened later, we both got shocked. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was it was such a like, like such a fun experience um, uh, playing remake, but. 
And then I've, I've been playing, and then I just, I've just been playing Resident Evil Evil remake over and over again. I I play it once a year. Uh I I try to do a run Uh, like you. This Resident Evil is my comfort game, and Uh Resident Evil One in particular is probably my comfort game, and Resident Uh Evil One remake in particular is my comfort game because, uh, because like as you said, Spencer Mansion. I think I I call Spencer Spencer Mansion my first home in video games. Um, it's the first place in a video game that I can recall remembering and by memory, you know, mm-hmm. uh, where I can walk around. If you, if you, if you took 12 year old me into Spencer mansion, he would know where to go around just as it would yeah. today as, as 42 year or 30 years, 30 years later, you know? So that's, and I, I think I was like 15 or 16 when I played it too, but yeah, the, there's such a strong sense of familiarity and, and homeliness to, to Spencer Mansion because you really, yeah. really have to understand that space in a way that I never experienced with any other kind of video game before. Not with, yeah. not even with like Metal Gear Solid or Final Fantasy or anything like that. Uh, you, you really, really know how to, you need to, needed to know this house, you know? Yeah. Cog, um, what's, your, what's going on with you, Resident Evil? I don't really know your, yeah. your history with it. Huge, huge fan. Um, the first changed changed my life i remember uh, again one of those uh, early playstation titles and we were just blown away like like gene said like the the pre-rendered backgrounds um the graphic the character models at the time you had a voice actor's a little cheesy like was yeah. it? Like, <laughs> oh, master of unlocking it, 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 wasn't even, it, it wasn't corny for me back then like we didn't have voice back acting back then oh, right we so, were just so, amazed that they yeah, talked yeah. uh, uh, again it's just like the boom, 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 street fighter one voices like like the, yeah. the fact that i could hear them clearly now yeah. like, yeah. i was like oh we came a long way from street fighter one long, baby that's how that's what i was thinking you know Facts, because it's and like Super you know, Metroid, when, when, when Super Metroid's voice sample at the beginning, where the first Metroid is yeah, in, the first, cap- the last Metroid the is last in captivity. Metroid is in <laughs> captivity. The yeah. galaxy is at peace, and yeah. I was like, "Yo, that's just no, so no, 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 no. Facts, but, yeah. no, you're right. It was, and it had like a whole pre-rendered cinema before how they got to the mansion. They get there, the tension is there, and um, yeah, I just, I just, I was like, "Oh, this is different." And I just remember how pristine that mansion looked and mm-hmm. how how cool it was. And then I believe what remastered now comes out for the cube now. Is it who, who had a remake? I'm trying to remember. Was it a remake came out for GameCube, right? Yeah. yeah, it was GameCube. Yeah, yeah so it, I had that. It, that it was, was part of it was part of the Capcom Five for GameCube. Yes, yes. It was beautiful Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, God, what was that game? I don't know. I'm forgetting. But anyways, yeah. yeah. Capcom, <laughs> no, but, <laughs> with Joe and other games. And there was Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil GameCube. Yeah. Yep. Resident Evil. And, I, and I'm going to be honest. Killer 7. Person, Killer 7. Yes. Yep. I was a person who was on the fence about the GameCube. I wasn't sure if I was going to pick it up around the launch. That's what put me over. Because mm. I saw the care. Mm. I'm like, oh, this is a glow up. Look how good better it looks and I, I was like yeah i'm picking up a gamecube immediately and i picked up that and zero i believe they, they did resident mm-hmm. evil zero yeah they did zero. Yep. Yeah, resident yeah. Evil zero yeah, yeah. Right so after. yeah resident evil man just the thing we used to have a tradition like resident evil started a thing with me and my friends that we would play the game and you have to lower the lights Mm-hmm. We wanted to make the horror experience. So people were like, yo, yo, what's going on? And it, the, the way the angles of the, the the shots that they would take, even though it had to take control, it would make you uncomfortable. Like those, like you said, long, Brad, those long, tight hallways, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. of that nature. So yeah, I, I have a fondness for Resident Evil. I'm more of the old school Resident Evil guy from you know from one to three. I play Veronica, all that stuff. Not nothing against four, nothing against the, the where the, the series is going. But these are always Resident Evil in my heart. To me, yeah, you the know? fixed camera ones. The fixed camera ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. dogs jump through the thing, and you know you, you lose your mind at certain the jump scare moments and stuff like that. Totally. Uh, Jay Curian wrote in Hello Chosen Undead Gene Bearer of the Curse Cog And Ashen One Brad It's all Dark Souls references Yes. <laughs> Resident Evil Remake is widely regarded As one of the best reimaginings In a franchise full of acclaimed remakes From the graphical overhaul And improved voice acting Expanded areas and puzzles Crimson Heads, love them or hate them Defense weapons and of course The tragic addition of Lisa Trevor there's a litany of upgrades that establish this as the definitive version of Resident Evil 1. What do you all consider to be the best remake in the Resident Evil franchise and why? Overall, I consider RE1 uh, the best for its time due to the additional 
uh, to the additions, but rank Resident Evil 2 remake as my favorite game in the series. Mm-hmm. Wishing you all the opposite of a my team took refuge from killer dogs in a mansion that turned out to be a test bed for human bioweapons kind of day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I like this, what they said. They they think they love one or they think Resident Evil 1 remake is probably the best, but 2 is their all-time favorite. Mm-hmm. And I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I'm in that pocket. <laughs> I'm literally in the pocket. Two, 2 is my favorite, but yeah. 1 is so iconic. Dude. You know, I can't take yeah. anything away from mm-hmm. 1. Yeah, I can't like with one. The only I just can't think of stuff ne- that's like I was like, oh, that was better in the first game, kind of thing like mm. that. No, yeah, you're you, you're right that that re- I think remake is the best one because it doesn't take anything away from part one as it just as, to, as you said everything. in part two, Resident Evil two, it did yeah. take away quite a bit from Resident Evil two. Yeah. You know, yeah, but it's just like you know, two re two remake is so good. I mean, it's, so it's still good. fucking amazing. Come fucking on, amazing. Like, I'm, 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 yeah, We're I'm not gonna talk shit. Yeah. yeah, I'm not They're complaining about shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's greatness versus greatness. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Resident well, Evil fans, we're eating good right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you caught up on all the Resident Evil games, um, Cog? I'm all the way up to about, not all of them. I think, um, what was the one with the, the big chick in it? <laughs> the big oh, girl. Village. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I got to finish that one. Okay, oh, dude, got it. you're going to love that one, dude. Mm-hmm. It's so, especially yeah, knowing you, Cog, I, I think you're going to yeah. like it. It's like so it. Yeah, it's right. good, man. It's, it's good. good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this is from Joe Frey. Hello to all summon signed lads. Actually, I actually recently played the Resident Evil remake on PS5 and very much enjoyed it. While it is a bit clunky and my God, do the door opening animations get tiring, it still used camera angles and unexpected jump scares and sound effects to create good sense of tension. My question is pretty simple. Do you think Capcom should re-remake the game? The original holds up fine enough, but throwing it into the RE engine could give it a new spin for a certain audience. However, I could see how the RE2 remake might make it redundant as both games mechanics could be perceived as too similar. Keen to hear your thoughts. All the best, Joey Frey. P.S. You've got to add some wild sound effects for Sort It Out and Keep It Up. Get a little jingle going. It's time. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have to ask Dustin about that. That's a, yeah. He'll throw Dustin, those in. Get a soundboard or something, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I love those segments. Uh, in terms of like a re-remake, I'd be okay with it if they re-remade it. Mm-hmm. more in line with like the modern like the third person over the shoulder because mm-hmm. it's not going to take away my other ones that i love so much but i think they need to remake some other ones first before they do that one i think you can do that down the line mm-hmm. sure because like i want to see the spencer mansion re engine as selfish mm-hmm. as that is i want to oh, see yeah. that and i want them to add a vr mode to it also so i can play oh, vr God, dude. dude you're, VR you're a brave man you're a VR brave man yeah. Resident Ooh. Evil 1 VR mode. Holy shit. Yeah, can you Spencer imagine? Mansion? Holy shit. Oh I'd lose God, my mind. Dude. It'd be amazing. Oh, please. I, I still need to play 4 remake in VR. Oh, yeah. so good. Like, that That tested my manhood. I was like, I don't know if I could do this for a long time. It's that <laughs> I good. Do that. It is yeah. that good. Yeah. yeah it's so that. good. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I would love to see. I'm like, I'm totally fine with them re-remaking the game. I don't care. It's fine. But I think they need to remake Code Veronica first. And they need to remake zero first those need remakes yes oh Big a remake of zero interesting yeah, yeah zero i think zero ironically. needs a remake yeah. <laughs> well i mean zero. make it better yeah <laughs> yeah make it better yeah and code I like too obviously yes so yeah, yeah, yeah yeah yes yeah, yeah. and because like zero ties into one and yeah some of the shit's weird in zero or a lot of it's weird in zero but like yeah but if they want to do it i'm all for them remaking it just do some other ones first all right, dudes, we're going to end the show off with some questions. Oh, my God. I will buy the shit out of Resident Evil 1 remake. Like, it's not so not necessary, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they, if they made one, I'm buying every copy. Salivating. Yeah, yeah I'm, being, I'm buying every copy on every platform anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. I love it. Oh. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. Absolutely, too. <laughs> uh, we're going to end the show with some questions, as we always do. But first, if you enjoyed the show or any of our shows, please support us on patreon.com slash last stand media. We'd all greatly appreciate it. Please leave nice reviews on all of our stuff. If you enjoy the shows too, on podcast services, watching the video on YouTube, leave us a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. 
All right, let's get into this question. This is from Matt Vigo. Hey, Brad, loving the show so far. It's gotten better and better every week. I can't remember if I submitted this last week or not. So here it is again. What do you think about having a game of the month? Have it focused on an older title that many of us never really got to excuse to go back to and play. It would fashion as a kind of like a video game book club. I think it'd be really fun to have the whole community erasing something from the backlog then re- and then receive an in-depth discussion about it. Hmm. Have a great week. So I am not opposed to this idea. However, if I have to commit to an old game once a month, that could be tough depending on what is coming out that mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. Like for this coming up like month, no way. Cause there's mm-hmm. so much stuff coming out, maybe in a slow month or something like that, where there's not a lot coming out. I could say, yeah, we could do something like that. And also some of the games we might get, if someone tells me like, you know, we're going to play trails or some shit, I'm like, okay, that's going to take me a while to do. So I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to be able to make the yeah, a timeline or something like that. Yeah. I'm not opposed to it, but I mean, maybe we can make sure that 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 that, that we we that it wouldn't be a long game, you know, like hey, yeah. this month is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let's yeah, have fun, guys, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. we'll pick a short game. game. Yeah, so so, so yeah, so maybe, so maybe we can make make sure that it'll be like at least like twenty hour games, or yeah. whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, not opposed to it. We just have to find the right game and the right time to do it. Because yeah, wrong, it wrong month. To, great idea. Right wrong month to propose this idea. Yeah, that's it ain't for happening sure. right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely happening right now. Yeah, I love right. the idea though. I, I've yeah. always been. I've always been into that idea. Uh, my buddies, uh, I Patch Wolf and Wooly Versus, are doing that exact same idea too. But oh, nice! But they're forcing each other because they're both very stubborn and not listening to each other, each mm. other's recommendations. So they, they basically made a whole podcast to yeah, force each other like- to. Cog and Maddie, and, or watch each other's literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is, is that Colin? Colin would never agree to a podcast like that because, like, yeah. nobody would ever. He would never want to be forced into doing it. It's like somebody gay that he can't stand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah totally. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next question is from Stephen. Hey, sign dudes with Infinite Wealth reviewing very well. Do you think it come? It could be a breakthrough or could be the breakthrough game this year. I'm talking about a developer releasing a critically acclaimed game and then finding newfound success. The top two examples I'm thinking of in this vein are Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3. Hmm. Brad, you're doing great work. Keep it up, Steven. So, yeah, kid, like a dragon, just break three. Like it's, the series has already broken through quite a bit over time, but could this be like mm-hmm. one of the game of the years that lasts the whole way everyone loves it kind of game mm-hmm. it's possible mm-hmm. i think it i could see it hitting further down in the year when people get time to actually play it kind of thing like that because it is such a long game and people are going to be playing a lot of stuff mm-hmm. but i could see this game being in the conversation throughout the entire year easily and it sounds like it did record numbers on steam compared to its old releases it did, yeah. which is great yeah yeah yeah, so I, I like what they're doing as far as also when I mean, the marketing has been super hard. Like they've been going yeah. extra with that. Drew yeah. and, as, as yeah. QC, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, 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 sorry to interrupt, but you're right mm-hmm. because because uh, the Yakuza series grew grew up on 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 through word of mouth of influencers. You know. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Totally. So yeah, it became like what I consider like this niche cult classic that now is finally getting that mainstream appeal. Mm-hmm. And I think when uh, RGG, I remember when they started putting the older games on Game Pass mm-hmm. and then Like a Dragon came and then they were like, we were really surprised that you guys like this. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was kind of this newfound energy. And we, 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 we've heard that from a lot of studios. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think that, um, I think this one may, may, may break through. I, I, I'm very curious mm-hmm. to see how the sales, you know, numbers look. But um, I know they've gone extra hard with, with in terms of really trying to get mainstream appeal mm-hmm. to this series. And I think they're doing a good job. We just got to see if it yeah. translates to sales. Mm-hmm. I would yeah, love yeah, yeah. nothing more than for this game to be this year's Baldur's Gate or Power World even. Oh, my goodness. Like, oh, even man, if this I'm game ended up selling like 8 million or, or 10 million, dude, I'd be That'd so be happy. awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm pulling for it. Not quite yeah. there yet, but, you know. Not quite there yet. If but I, dude, if I actually sell 10 million, that, that, that's like lifetime sales for the whole series, you know? So, yeah, yeah, that would be a humongous yeah, success for them. That would be so oh, huge. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Pr- yeah. praying for it. Go buy Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Yes. Yeah. 
Sounds like it's an easy recommend. All right. This next question is from Pair of Shoes. Hey, Brad and crew. Why are Japanese slash Eastern games treated differently regarding suggestive themes or sexuality compared to Western games now? The most recent example is Stellar Blade, where Western game journalists acted offended at the games yet Yet, the same exact people make countless articles and videos about Baldur's Gate 3, including articles and videos about the sound of ball smacking and bear sex, the sexual <laughs> content of cyberpunk, and even on sacred symbols with the pay- playful joke of the big booty Latina in GTA 6. It just <laughs> seems like a lot of unfair double standards. The new show is great, and thank you for the great content. Hmm. Hey, I'm I ready for see... the big booty Korean girl in, in Stellar, Stellar yeah, Blade. Yeah, I saw so... some people <laughs> no. complaining about Stellar Blade, and it's just like, who cares, dude? <laughs> like, yeah. who cares? Just let a, just let the the characters exist, man. I don't give a shit if you want. Like, yeah. and she's based off a real model too. I saw it's like yeah. that's she is. I yeah, you know. I don't know why people get hung up on that stuff. Yeah, I, I think the difference is you know. Like Baldur's Gate and Western games uh, portray sexuality as something that, you know, is emotionally involved, that involves two humans. And, you know, it, mm. it, the, the, even the bear and the blah, 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 it comes from a, it comes, from, comes from a relationship. So there's context behind, like, the, you know, the ball smacking and everything like that. Whereas in Stellar Blade, whereas in Stellar Blade, you got a hot girl for, you you a hot girl for the sake of hot girls, you know, that's it. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think, I, I, I think, I think a lot of criti- criticism can't really wrap around the, the just just accepting that like sometimes something can just be about a hot person and that's yeah. just what it is, you know. Um, yeah. It, 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 and I, I I I don't I don't know what kind of stellar blade what what kind of femininity a stellar blade is is uh, proposing because we don't really know what the story is mm-hmm. about what, what the game is about. Obviously, it is, it's very sexy, right? But then mm-hmm. you, we look at Bayonetta and the whole thing about uh, Bayonetta and people mis- misunderstanding Bayonetta back in the day was that people thought Bayonetta was about the male sexual gaze or fantasy, right? Where it's like when you look at Bayonetta's fan base today, it's mostly like like gay kids and trans kids and everything because they they, they see Bayonetta as as uh, as an icon for you know sexual ex- expression you know mm-hmm. so I do think that a lot, there is a lot of like misunderstanding in terms of uh, you know what kind of in what context are these are these are are are, are these different t- types of sexuality uh, being presented right now Stellar Blade looks like it's, it's just about you know looking at the hot girl and and that's okay yeah. I I I, yeah. I I I I think that's I think that part is, is that people need to get used to you know it's just sometimes it's just about someone being hot you know and that yeah. just needs it that that that's, that, yeah. that can exist too you know you got cosplayers yeah. who are just uh, who are just showing way more you know yeah 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 listen I'm I'm all about developer expression and mm-hmm. it's their canvas what they want to do with it you know is whether or not I'm I'm fully supporting letting them do their vision, and mm-hmm. if someone has a problem with it, fine. I don't support the game, but I'm never going to tell someone like, "Oh, they shouldn't be doing this and that." Like, right. I, I'm just not for for that part. So, yeah, I, I think that um, you know, some developers, like whether it be Japanese studios, whatever, like they like. I'm always like I'm always surprised because sometimes I'm like, wow, in the West they probably wouldn't been able to get away with this. They'd have probably been criticized if this was, you know, a Western studio kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I love it. I love the the contrast and the different ideas. And I mean, bro, I was playing a uh, man erase his name, and I think you told me, um, <laughs> Gene, that I like I didn't know they had like this whole hostess thing in full motion video <laughs> yeah. and the chicks that I'm and interacting. I'm like, yo, that's this is why like people signed off on this. They they, they having fun with this. Like, I, they exactly. were just so interesting to me. Peach Peach bizarre. Milky is in is in Infinite Wealth. You know, <laughs> see there we go. <laughs> and, and she she's got Fansley. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's expression, <laughs> man, and I'm all for it. Let 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 developers do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like people complain about everything, so yeah. you can't get worked about everything. It's just the way yeah. it is. It's exactly. Games, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, if you think that people are complaining about it too much online, the the fact is that that, that probably means not a lot of people give a shit about it. Yeah, so, that's true. Yes. You know? Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, l- look at how many people complain about Power World, and look at how many people are actually hey, playing actually Power World. That's I always true. tell people, yeah, that's I, true. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Jim, because mm-hmm. I always tell people a lot of times social media is an echo chamber, but it does not reflect because they mm-hmm. have the data. Like these are the people that are actually buying the game, playing mm-hmm. it, enjoying it. Exactly. And the loud exactly. minority, you guys exactly. don't. Think you're not as important as you think mm-hmm. you are. Mm-hmm. So, so, social media can be real life, but the, yeah. but, but those power old folks, folks, exactly, they got the data oh, outside. Oh, so they're, 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 they're hearing whatever's going on on Twitter, and then Ooh. they're seeing the data over here, and they say, okay, we're going to pay attention to the folks over here because they're busy, and we're going to make it. We, we, we got to come up with this roadmap right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that roadmap, that splash screen, they develop it quick. We got to get, we got to take care of these eight million. <laughs> exactly, there's a lot of people we got to take care of. We got to build this roadmap right now. Shut those out. Shut Shut off all those other people. We don't got to listen. Let's just make this graphic right now. And they, they did. They, they, they just did. shut up and they went to work. That's exactly that's, what they did, you know? So I mean, I maybe making fun of them that they just came up with a roadmap. But at, at, at the very least, in, in this fictional pocket pair that I have in my head, at the very least, they're not listening to folks. And they focus and they made the graphic and they put out the tweet and, and, they, and they're, they're back exactly. to work. Exactly. You know? That's right. <laughs> all right. Final question from Dylan Brown. Hey, Summon Sign boys, I'm playing Power World in Doki Doki Literature Club, which you think have nothing in common, but both games have a cute aesthetic with a dark side. Yeah. Is there any game that surprised you how dark it got compared to how it looked, even if you're even if going and you knew it was coming? Thanks. And great work as always. Cute aesthetic. Dark tone. Mm. Kirby. 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 I, I think people, a lot of people don't uh, don't realize that Kirby and Dark Souls pretty much have the same story. So, <laughs> yeah. but I got to give Maddie a shout out to his uh, Danganronpa. Danganronpa, I, yeah, it's a great example. I was like, okay, they they, they out here murdering these kids. It's great. <laughs> yeah, Danganronpa is definitely a blind spot for me. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Kingdom Hearts and Danganronpa are probably the two things I, I'm, I'm probably mm. missing out most. You know, same. So. same. Uh, <laughs> I remember. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. You oh, see Conquer. Oh, yes, yes. You're like, yeah, who's this so little good, cute little squirrel? Yeah. Then you oh, play yeah. the game. Oh, boy. Very he different. Off. Oh, yeah, yeah. He is going crazy. Blood swearing. Giant poop monster. It's yes. got it all. Yes. <laughs> Shut the cockers. All right, boys. That's it. Yeah. We are done. Episode five, Summon Sign. Great episode, dude. Love yes. talking with you guys. Super fun. Good to finally meet you, Cog. Looking forward to seeing you in New York. Yes. Gene, great to talk with you again. As Likewise, always, yeah. looking forward to seeing you too, man. Uh, you guys got any final words or any final thoughts before we head out? Yeah, good episode. Finally made it into the realm of the summon sign. And, uh, yes, sir. Good show, man. A lot. Love the questions. Love the topics. Talking about these games in depth. Great stuff. Glad to finally be able to do it. I'm mm-hmm. even patient. Even waiting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, Everyone's so I busy. It. I got it. <laughs> I appreciate it. And the whole VG case through on top of it. Always love your insight. You got stories for days, bro. <laughs> like you got <laughs> unique stories. I love. Like, right? I love it. So yeah. Great episode, fam. Cool. All right. That's it. We will see you next week, everybody. Have a oh, good yeah, one. Good oh, oh wait, Gene. Gene I thought you were, you, yeah. you were quiet for a second. Yeah, you were quiet. So I was like, we thought you was gonna okay. say bye. Yeah, that's why I went <laughs> off. Gene, <laughs> please. I don't want to say bye anymore. It's fine. Now you get Honestly, it's it's great to be on the second episode of Seven Sign. I actually, I actually am remiss. I forgot to mention Brad that I've been yes. a, a longtime fan of you at Easy Allies, and I I didn't realize how long I've been watching you until I realized that I watch uh, uh, the the Death Stranding reaction on Easy Allies. Mm-hmm. over and over again anytime i'm feeling down uh, oh uh, really you guys have like the best reaction uh and i yeah i just go back to that one like all the time and oh that's thanks just, dude you you were there thanks, too man. uh yeah, yeah. so it's, it's it's great to work with you so thank you man yeah i'm yeah. very honored to work with See, both you, of you you skip you almost missed out on the earnestness you know i know <laughs> holy shit dude <laughs> we'll give gene some extra time next time make sure exactly. we get it out there All right. That's it, everybody. We'll see you all later. Take care, everybody. Summon Sign is a product of Last Stand Media and Colin's Last Stand LLC and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show is written and hosted by me, Brad Ellis. The show is produced by Dustin Furman. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. 
Summon Sign, along with the rest of Last Stand's media shows, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we are grateful for your kind contribution and generosity to our independent endeavor. Thank you.